Bonjour. I'm Chloe, and I live here in the French city of Toulouse. I'm working on my debut romance novel about a couple destined to be together despite all the hurdles they face. If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment. Boo! <laughs> Lost in your dumb fictional world again? If you like the sound of it, then leave a comment. <laughs> That's Cedric, my brother. But I doubt it, because we have nothing in common. And he's a massive pain in my... Uh -huh. Anyway... I guess you could say I'm introverted, and I dream of becoming a best-selling romance novelist, making a living out of doing what I love. Only, dreams don't always go to plan, and publishing houses don't seem to like my drafts. Meanwhile, Cedric is Satan in disguise, whose sole purpose is making my life miserable. He turned off my alarm and made me late for a meeting, changed all of my contacts' names to emojis, and one time, I woke up to see my laptop covered all in plastic wrap. The problem was, he got away with being a jerk simply because he was deemed good-looking. In his fangirl's eyes, he could do no wrong. Living with Cedric was such an endurance test, so I avoided him the best I could by going to a private school, instead of the same public school as him. Everything was fine, until our parents lost everything in stocks, and we had no choice but to move into this teeny, tiny house. One night, I went downstairs to get some water and saw Mom and Dad up late with bills piled up around them. Seeing them like that made me desperately want to help. So the next day, I told them that the public school had a creative writing club and that I wanted to transfer there. My tuition fees weren't a burden anymore, but going to the same school as Cedric was not ideal. So I insisted that he acted like he didn't know me at all. Still, the first few days were terrible as I kept getting lost and felt so out of place. I hardly looked up and only identified other students by their shoes. Thank goodness for the pink and white sneaker girl, Emma. She was the only person who actually noticed me, and when I told her about my writing dreams, she was really supportive. We became best friends and could chat about everything, even my annoying brother. Things were better at school, but not at home. My parents were still struggling to hide their money problems, and Cedric... Well, was just being Cedric. Couldn't he see that now wasn't the time for his clown antics? I helped out as much as I could by cleaning, doing laundry, preparing meals, and even got a part-time job in a patisserie. While he literally did nothing. Why can't you stop fooling around? Chill out, sis. Even when you have a mare, all the stress will give you gray hair. Fine, act like a moron and stay in this moronic place forever. I'll get our old house back alone. After a busy shift, I just wanted to get home and go straight to bed. Only when walking along the curb, I spotted Cedric doing some dumb, noisy performance. Ugh, such a laughable, selfish bum. I had to seriously hold back or else my fist would definitely land on his face. Oh, I still had the last chapter to finish. My body was ready to shut down, but I couldn't slack. Not if I wanted to complete it by Louis Beaumont's book launch. He's my favorite author. I'd planned for months to fly to Nice and hand him my manuscript. Suddenly, the lights went out. Guys, looks like the electricity company cut us off because of those unpaid bills. Gosh, we can't live like this. So I pulled out some money from the back of the manuscript. This was money for my Nice trip. But this is more urgent. So I gotta do what I have to do. Mom, Dad, here's some money. Just to help out a bit. The next day, Cedric barged into my room with a smug grin on his face. Guess who's going to Paris? Try not to miss me too much, will ya? What? B but where did you get your money from? Mom and Dad? Duh. Check it out. That's my money? I can't believe this. We don't even have electricity, but they gave him money to go mess around in Paris? I shoved him out of my room and slammed the door shut. I'd always tried my best to not disappoint them, yet they favored my deadbeat brother and spoiled him rotten. All this family stuff was eating me up, so on school day, I confided in Emma. Only when I tried talking to her, she seemed distracted and kept drifting with the music. Em, Em, are you listening? Oh, sorry, but this beat is straight up fire. Look, he's the winner of this contest. Isn't he amazing and talented? I looked at her phone and saw, what? Cedric? So he came to Paris for this stupid contest? Don't talk about him, okay? That's my selfish, uncaring brother I've always talked about. Be his fan, and we can't be friends anymore. Things got even worse when Cedric went home and literally made it rain with his reward money. Chloe, look at all of this money your brother won. Thanks to his talent, we can go back to our old house. Ugh, why is everything so easy for Cedric? He did some nonsense rap and became a celebrity? Meanwhile, it's me who had to give up my trip, my dream. At least we got the old house back, but day after day, these annoying reporters are driving me crazy. 
How did you come up with meaningful lyrics? Meaningful? Everyone knows rap isn't actually music. It's just some noise full of swearing and insults. Yeah, ignore her. She's just cranky from skipping breakfast. There's no escaping Cedric's name, not even at school. Please, please, please introduce me to him. Why are you so obsessed with him? Don't you remember anything I said about how terrible he is? Come on, give his music a try. I can't believe someone who wrote such beautiful lyrics can be as bad as you say he is. Fine. If she wanted to meet him, then I'd grant her that wish. It's about time she saw his true face. I opened the door and showed Emma inside when suddenly we were covered in a cloud of confetti. Why the long face? My grand welcome was the bomb. Do you know how long it would take to clean this mess? Ugh. Em, this is my brother. An idiot. Idiot brother. Em. But then I turned around to see Emma already soaking up Cedric's every word. I can't take this anymore. My time would be better spent writing. Trembling thoughts. Through fear, your eyes will find mine. Love will bind us like a cat's nine lives. Wow, that's perfect. Wait, that voice sounds unfamiliar. Oh my, this guy was heartthrob level handsome. Bonjour, I'm Pierre, Cedric's colleague. Is he home? Yes, let me show you the way. What are you seeking him for? We're collaborating on my next album, so I'm here to practice. As a senior singer, I also helped Cedric build his show and industry connections. He's superb, isn't he? After that day, Pierre visited my house more often. Turns out he's a sweet and gentle guy who always brought us gifts, such as flowers and scented candles. And after dinner, he even helped me wash up. How can such an angel work with my devil brother? One day when I was out with Emma, suddenly she looped her arm around me and said, You sure seem chirper these days. It's probably because Cedric's often away on music shows. You're telling me it has nothing to do with Pierre? Come on, Chloe, it's written all over your face. Fine. He's really sweet, and his smile is as bright as the sun. How can I approach someone like him? Hmm, why not start with a love letter? I took Emma's advice and wrote the most romantic letter ever, then brought it to his company. If anyone asks, I'll say I'm here to see my brother. Huh? Are they arguing? I went over to Pierre and asked him what had happened. Oh, it's nothing really. Cedric is just stressed out from his busy schedule. Yeah, right. As if there was anything stressful about this nonsense rap thing. Now is my moment. So I stuffed the letter in Pierre's hand, then ran away. I was still giddy with excitement when I arrived home. Only Cedric ruined my mood by sitting there looking like he'd swallowed a wasp. Oh no, are all showbiz parties too tiring? What a tragedy. Shut it, Chloe. What does a dreamer like you know? Dreamer? At least I'm not a self-centered, shallow idiot. I sacrificed everything so you could go after your dumb rap career. And all you do is act like an ungrateful jerk. Grow up and stop being so childish. I expected him to shout back at me, but instead he gave me this dead look, then trudged off to his room. He didn't come down for dinner or anything for the next three days. Hmm, this house sure was quiet without him. But he's a chill guy and things will go back to normal soon, right? I guess I should just enjoy the peace while I could. The next day, Emma showed up at my house all worked up. Is Cedric here? He didn't answer any texts and calls. Huh? You two are messaging each other? Uh, um, I just wonder if he's okay. How typical of you to talk to him behind my back. To my surprise, Emma just impatiently barred past me and ran up to Cedric's room. Then she reappeared with a note. Cedric's gone. Jeez, how irresponsible and impulsive. He really doesn't care about anyone but himself. Enough! I won't listen to you badmouth your brother anymore. Can't you see he's seriously struggling and showing signs of depression? Who's the one who doesn't care about family here? And you really believe you're better than him? Emma's outburst left me stunned. Is Cedric really depressed? How was I meant to know that when he's always goofing around? That evening, Mom and Dad kept fretting about Cedric's disappearance. He gave his all to help us while we could do nothing to help him. Remember those days he performed on the streets? He gave us all the money he earned, and he always tried to cheer us up when things were down. Cedric only wanted to join the rap contest to win some more money. He was very nervous, but we believed in him, so we gave him the money to enter. Oh God, so I misunderstood him all along? Suddenly I remembered his winning track that Emma insisted that I listen to. I went up to my room and turned it on. It's about us, his beloved family. Turns out he wasn't a deadbeat idle loser like I thought he was. He always puts on a happy face to lift other spirits while quietly struggling with his own demons. I needed to find him and apologize immediately. 
so I went to Pierre for help. I had no idea he was struggling so badly. I should have noticed that he was suffering and not overloaded him with work. But there's an important show coming. If Cedric was a no-show, he'd be in breach of his contract and have to pay a huge sum in compensation. Oh no, that's not good. What should we do now? You know what? You look a lot like Cedric. How about you disguise as him? But how? Don't worry, our makeup team is top-notch. Nobody's gonna know. This all sounded crazy, but it seemed like I had no other choice. My family couldn't be in debt again for this. Being this close to Pierre made my heart flutter. He took me for my makeover, then I learned to lip sync and perform on stage. I even tried to walk and talk like my brother. I felt bad about deceiving his fans, but I couldn't risk Cedric getting into big trouble. It's only a one-time thing. Sometimes I lip sync too. It's no big deal. I felt a bit confused. Then suddenly, a stage crew member above me accidentally dropped a wrench. It could have knocked me off if Pierre didn't swoop in and save the day. Now, back to practicing, and oh boy, was it hectic. Pierre stayed with me the whole time and was really supportive. We also never stopped trying to look for Cedric together. I felt our connection growing, but couldn't figure out why he hadn't made any move. Maybe my first letter hadn't been clear enough, so I sneaked into Pierre's room and left him another one. Only later that day, I saw him glued to his phone, so I took a glance. Huh? He was messaging somebody with a very cheesy nickname. Right, he wasn't interested because he was already dating someone else. Oh no, I have to reclaim my second letter before humiliating myself. I ran into his room but couldn't find it anywhere. Wait, what's this? Here comes the big night. I was absolutely terrified. Pierre smiled sweetly at me and held my hands. We shared a look, then stepped on stage together. There were so many people out there. My legs felt numb, but then I spotted Emma beaming at me from the front row, and my nerves eased again. I quickly found the beat, then lip-synced and danced perfectly. But halfway through the song, the stage light suddenly went off and a shadowy figure walked toward me. Cedric! The audience oohed and awed, then clapped in excitement as Cedric continued the rest of the performance. During the break, everyone went backstage and saw Pierre grab Cedric's arm. Cedric, where have you been? We've all been worried sick. Drop the act. You're just using me to make yourself rich, forcing me to do show after show, and when I was exhausted, you pushed lip syncing onto me. What are you talking about? These shows are to help you gain support. Starting out in this industry is hard. Hey, I even lent you some money to get your house back. You mean the money you used to tie my brother in with a stupid contract? You compelled Cedric to work exclusively with you, performing two years for free to clear his debt. But according to these receipts for each show, the money he should have received already exceeded the amount he owed you. W what the? Surprised much? Now we have all the evidence against you. So what? Cedric signed it anyway. A contract is a contract. Break it and I'll get you kicked out of the company and make sure you never get any show again. Your whole family will be dirt poor alike before. I don't think so. What would the public say if they knew you've been flirting with him all along, and when he rejected you, you manipulated and overworked him until he agreed to date you? Uh, how long have you known? Long enough to expose you. Now, you have two options. One, cancel the contract within the next 24 hours and pay my brother the excess money you exploited from him. Or two, we'll publish what you did and see if you survive in showbiz afterward. I don't hate you for having feelings for me, but this deal is not fair. Pierre looked nervous and angry, then just stormed off. I turned to my annoying, goofy brother and gave him a big hug. I'm sorry for misunderstanding you before. Why didn't you tell us that you borrowed money to get back our house? I know how much you wanted our house back, so I joined the contest, but the prize money wasn't enough. That's when I asked Pierre. Silly me. If you hadn't found the contract and receipts, I would have still believed his lies and worked till exhaustion. So you did get my message. I was about to shut off all connections to the world. But that day I felt super uneasy, so I opened my phone and saw your message. Must be sibling telepathy. One more thing. Emma, you truly helped me find myself again. What do you say? Do you want to be a superstar rapper's girlfriend? Yes, I do! Please keep the lovey-dovey stuff to a minimum in front of me. Luckily, I was spared when a stage crew called Cedric to go back on stage. You know, it's not easy for us artists to have a big platform, literally like the stage. We always have a price to pay for the glory. Because of that, I'm eternally grateful for my amazing family and friends who always have my back. And a big shout out to my sister for being my inspiration for this song. Then he started rapping to my poetry. His rhymes and my poems are flowing, really getting the crowd going. 
She's a lyrical gymnastic genius. After the show, Cedric received a video from Pierre. Cedric, I'm sorry for taking advantage of you. I like you so much and wanted to keep you close. I'll pay back what I owe you, then take a break from showbiz for a while. I really hope one day you can forgive me. Phew, all that drama was a lot for my introverted self to handle. So now, I've treated myself to some me time to recharge. Thanks to Cedric rapping, dozens of my publishers reached out to me for my poems, including those who'd previously rejected me. <sighs> Gosh, am I seeing it wrong? A male from Louis Beaumont himself? I can't wait to see him in person. And you keep working on your dream. Perhaps a secret angel is on the way to bring you a wonderful opportunity. Hey, I'm Callie. I'm almost 16, but I could live in peace only in the first two years of my child's life. Until my little brother, Ethan, came along and ruined everything. I always hoped that that little brat had never been born. And if you're the oldest sibling like I am, then chances are you'll feel the same way as I do. Firstly, his birth meant that my parents barely noticed me anymore. Yeah, I know I was two back then, so I don't actually remember this, but as the years passed by, I saw how it was. I got into trouble for dumb things because I was the oldest, while Ethan got away with everything because he was too young to understand. Ugh, I really hate my brother. And I could tell tons of reasons for that. We always fought over the last slice of pizza. When he got it, he'd eat it open-mouthed in front of me. And mom would smile and say, Ah, oh, my growing boy. But when I got it, mom would frown at me and say, Callie, don't be greedy. Ugh! He'd sneak into my room and took the plushy bunny my bestie gave me and super glued its ears together. So I took his switch and hid it in the basement. It took him an entire week to find it. Ha! <laughs> in revenge, he smeared chocolate over the back of my pants. I only realized what was going on when other kids started laughing and pointing at me. I had to wear my sweater tied around my waist for the rest of the day, even though it was freezing. So, I retaliated by rubbing stinging nettles on his pillow. The next morning, his face was bright red and he couldn't stop itching. It was so funny. It was also a photo shoot day. So much to his protests, a makeup artist spent ages applying makeup on him to cover up the redness. He looked so ridiculous. <laughs> you see, my dad's a politician, so sometimes we have to appear in photo shoots where we look like a loving, harmonious family. Pfft. As if. I could play pretend for the cameras, but in reality, I really just wanted to kick my brother's butt. We just didn't get on at all. He's such a brat. So I guess pranking each other was our coping strategy. I mean, hey, it isn't easy living with someone you hate. Our pranks happen so often that our parents just let us get on with it. However, there is one thing Ethan is terrified of. It all started back when he was eight, and Dad was watching The Walking Dead. Me and Ethan walked into the room just as there was a zoom-in scene in which a zombie was having a feeding frenzy. Being the brave girl, I thought it was interesting and sat down and watched it with Dad. But my bro, being the wuss, he screamed, then ran out of the room, hid under our parents' bed, burst into tears and refused to move for two hours because he was convinced that at the sight of that zombie, he knew he must be chosen, and zombies were going out to get him. Gotta Achilles heel. So not long after that, when he dropped my brand new headphones down the toilet, which made me have to put my hand in to pick it up, I decided to get revenge on him. And luckily for me, Halloween was just around the corner. Perfect. I binge-watched makeup tutorials on YouTube and practiced on my friends. Then on Halloween, I turned myself into a seriously scary zombie, hid the video camera in his room, got into his closet, and made grumbling and moaning sounds. When he opened the closet door, I jumped out at him and tackled him to the floor. OMG! He screamed so loudly and he actually peed his pants. And now... All these years later, I still have it on video to torment him with. Ha! But don't be fooled, as my brother was not your average kitty. It wasn't that long ago that he played a prank on me, which made me madder than Misty from Pokemon. So, I had a crush on this boy from school. He was just so sweet and dreamy, and from the cute glances he kept on giving me, I was 100% sure he liked me too. Valentine's Day seemed like the perfect day to express my feelings toward him. 
So I stayed up until midnight the night before, making chocolate for him. I left my chocolates lovingly wrapped and boxed on the side in the kitchen and went to bed. The next day, I grabbed the box and at lunchtime, I handed it to my crush. To my utter dismay when he opened it, instead of the lovely heart-shaped chocolates I'd spent hours making, there were embarrassing childhood pics of me, including a photo from when I was 12 with a bunch of hideous pimples on my face. One of me as a toddler sleeping with my mouth open and saliva drool on my chin, and one of me as a baby with a bowl of food mush on my head. Then my crush lifted up a note saying, Great chocolate, sis. That sneaky brat. Although my crush kept saying that I looked really cute in those photos and he liked them even more than chocolates, I still wanted to give that brat a hard punch right in his annoying face. Oh God, I'm begging you, please take him away from me. I'll be good. I'll do my homework on time and I'll stop borrowing mom's expensive perfume. Okay, so this may have been my wish, but I never expected that it would come true. It was a normal evening around the dinner table. Ethan was glued to his phone, and Mom got really annoyed and made him clear up the table. While he was doing that, I saw a message pop up on his phone from someone called Sophie, saying, Okay, I'll see you in the front of the cinema at 8 p.m. I'm looking forward to it, smiley face. What? Ethan had a date? Oh, my sweet little bro. It was payback time for ruining my crush's chocolates. So I stealthily followed Ethan to the cinema. Because the cinema was pretty close to our home, we both walked. He cut through the park. Jeez, it was creepy at this time. I swear the trees looked like monsters. Anyway, I saw something light up by my feet. I picked it up. It was Ethan's phone. What an idiot. I was so gonna make him work hard to get this back. As I walked out of the park, I saw a black van parked nearby. Suddenly, I heard a scream and saw two giant men trying to drag Ethan toward the back of the van. Ethan was crying and struggling with fierce resistance, but my weak, skinny 14-year-old brother was no rival for those two men. What? How dare they try and kidnap my brother? He might have been the most annoying human on the planet, but he was my annoying little brother. There's no way I was letting this happen. I rushed forward and shouted, Ethan, zombie mode on! My presence startled the two kidnappers, and this made them more intent on dragging him toward the van when all of a sudden, Ethan bit down hard into the hand of the man who was covering his mouth, just like how zombies always do. Good one, bro. The man wept out and shook his hand. The other man pulled on Ethan's arm, but he managed to scramble to his feet. As the man tried to push him into the van, Ethan sought his opportunity and kicked him right between his legs. Ouch. While this was going on, I called the cops and told them to be quick. Then I saw the jerk with the bitten hand about to grab Ethan again. So I screamed out loud, Ethan, run! He sprinted off into the park and the bitten man followed him. It was exactly a real-life zombie chase. Huh. Suddenly, I felt arms grab me around the waist. Oh no, it was the other guy. He said, I guess you'll have to go too. Before he lifted me up and carried me over to the back of the van. I screamed out and tried hitting and kicking out, but he was too strong. He threw me into the back of the van before he could get in. I smashed the van door and quickly locked the door from the inside to knock him out. Lucky for me, not him, but the guy chasing Ethan was the one who was keeping the key. It was so scary when the kidnapper kept shouting at me outside, but I was even more frightened thinking Ethan could get hurt somewhere out there. Then suddenly I heard his voice. Hey, stop. Did he get caught? I looked out to see the contrary. He was running towards me after two police officials. They were holding their guns to control the guy standing by the van. Ethan was safe and came back for me. I opened the door and jumped into his arms. Oh, let's skip this part. I get goosebumps every time I recall this weepy situation. Me and Ethan followed the cops and saw the other kidnapper handcuffed to a tree, fighting with mosquitoes with his one free arm in the dark. The police told me that during the way heading to the van, Ethan kept on complaining about how slow and unprofessional they were as they should come to save me first instead. My boy still stubbornly said, I could run myself, but this wimp couldn't. The idiot definitely couldn't have imagined that he has a Wonder Woman big sister like me. <laughs> Our parents rushed into the police department to see us. And yep, weepy part again. Turned out my dad's rival had hired the guy to kidnap Ethan so that they could use him to blackmail my dad. I don't clearly understand the whole situation, Maybe after this I'll watch more political movies, but now, thanks God, we're safe. 
I may have wished my brother would disappear, but when I actually could have lost him forever, well, I have to admit that it really freaked me out. And it turns out, he felt the same way about me too. Crazy, huh? Of course, we still play pranks on each other. We wouldn't be us if we didn't. But I realized something. He might be the most annoying brat ever, but he's still my family. And I love my family so much. However, I'm pretty sure there'll still be times when I hate my annoying little bro. Like right now, while I'm sitting in my room telling you my story, I'm sure I can hear him giggling outside of my door. What's the betting I open it and end up with a bucket of cold water on my head or something? All this may because I have told my mom he has a girlfriend. Tough luck, little bro. There's no way you're getting the better of this pranking queen. I was tidying up my room when a call came through. Oh, my big sister! She lives with mom, so I've not seen her in a year. Blair, it's been a hot minute. How have you been? Hi, Karenin. Well, not so good. Mom laughed. Oh no, what happened? Then Blair told me it's due to mom's debts. She had run away from the loan sharks and left my sister behind. That's awful. So I told her to come to Portland and live with us. She agreed to come, but then I realized that Blair staying here wasn't really down to me. Oh well, it's not like I could leave her in danger, right? So later over dinner, I told my family about Blair's current situation. Oh, how terrible. Yes, Blair must come and stay. Yay! Their kindness didn't surprise me as my stepmom and stepsis, Chrissy, have been lovely to me ever since I moved in. You know what's even cooler? Christy is a rising teen pop star, but she's so sweet. We've grown super close, and she even told me all about her secret boyfriend, Damien. They'd been together long before Chrissy became famous, and had since kept their relationship out of the public eye. This is so exciting! I haven't seen Blair since our parents split. This guest bedroom is gonna be hers, and we're living under one roof again! Blair's basically my alter ego. She's pretty, outgoing, and popular, while I'm more of a homebody. Come to think of it, I see a lot of Blair and Chrissy. They're both so extroverted and confident. They'll get along just great. But to everyone's surprise, Blair showed up looking completely different. Wow, it seems like living with mom, a party animal, had clearly influenced Blair. Hello, Blair. I'm Stacy, and this is my daughter, Chrissy. Welcome to Portland. You must be tired from your trip. Let me take your bag. Sure. Huh? Doesn't it seem like everyone's excited about Blair's arrival, all except for Blair? Maybe she's just tired. I showed Blair her room and helped her unpack. Oh my god, they're unbearable. How can you stand living with them? They think they're so much better than everyone else. What? Blair had only spoken to them for five seconds. Why she disliked them so much already? Give them a chance, they're really lovely. Blair's probably just stressed out from all the mom stuff. Hopefully with time, she'll see how great stepmom and Chrissy are. Only things didn't get any better. After class, both Chrissy and Blair came up to me. Hey, hey wanna, wanna hang, hang out? out? I asked her first. Oh, then we can all go together. Sorry, Chrissy. It's just that we haven't seen each other in ages and there's a lot of catching up to do. Maybe we can go to Sephora tomorrow to check out that new Anastasia palette you like. Sure, have fun. Then Chrissy left. I'm sure she really wants us all to hang out. Oh, please. She thinks just cause she's popular, she can always get her own way. She's mid. Okay, maybe it's best not to mention either of my sisters to one another to avoid World War III. Things went on like that for a while. I took turns to hang out with Blair and Chrissy. Once when Blair was chilling in my room, I noticed her smiling at her phone. Seemed like our homegirl had finally found something fun to enjoy around here. I excitedly asked her what she was watching. Look, isn't he cute? He goes to our school also. Wait, no, it can't be. That's Damien, Chrissy's secret boyfriend. If Blair learns that the girl she hates is her crush's girlfriend, all hell will break loose. I think I'll ask him out. Really? He's so popular, he must have hundreds of girls wrapped around his finger already. Besides, what if he's not into you? You'll only be rejected and get hurt. What do you mean? Am I not pretty enough? Oh, I see. You think that a popular guy like him is only suitable for your famous, fabulous other sister, Chrissy, don't you? No, no, that's not what I mean. You're gorgeous. In fact, out of his league. You deserve a guy who has time just for you. So why bother competing for attention from someone like him? Okay, thanks, but he's my type. I'll ask for his number Monday morning. Oh no, 
I just accidentally encouraged Blair to ask out Chrissy's boyfriend. I can't reveal that Chrissy and Damien are secretly together, but I can't let Blair steal someone else's boyfriend either. What a mess. I tossed and turned all night. Then when I woke up, I decided I'd just have to make Blair stop liking Damien. I don't condone catfishing, but right now it's the only way. Hey there, Blair, right? It's Damien here from math class. What you doing? A few seconds later, Blair replied. Oh my god, I was just thinking about getting your number. Looks like the first steps of my plan are working. I texted Blair as Damien regularly. I made sure he was a man of a thousand red flags. But for some puzzling reason, Blair seemed smitten with him. I gave him a seriously challengeable temperament. He could throw a tantrum one moment and become sweet the next. Then I photoshopped Damien's selfie into a photo of a messy bedroom, then sent it to Blair. Surely she couldn't abide by a narcissistic, messy guy like him. I'm so sorry, Damien, but I have to save my family. Huh? What? She sent back a picture of her room being messier than ever. She's always the clean freak around here. I had to see with my own eyes. Hey, may I borrow your hair curler? And what's with your room? So what if it's a bit untidy? Neat people are total psychos. Okay, it's time to get personal. Blair's biggest pet peeve was being commented on her look. So when she sent Damien a selfie, I didn't hold back. Babe, can't you dress more ladylike? And you really should cover up that awful tattoo. Voila, that's how you wake up the beast inside this fierce girl. <laughs> However, the next day, Blair showed up with a completely new look. Worse still, she walked straight over to Damien. I had to fake having an emergency to prevent a disaster from happening. Afterward, I texted Blair. I'm not ready to let everyone know about us yet. Please understand, babe. You know I like you. There, that should stop her from trying to approach him again. Even so, during lunch, Blair wouldn't stop blabbering about Damien and showing me his text. Isn't he quite rude? You don't normally let guys tell you what to do. He's not. He's just opinionated. I'm into that. No, he's horrible. I don't understand why you like him. He's sweet. You just don't know him like I do. Our love is complicated, but that's what makes it special. Seriously, you called that love? What do you know? Okay, little Miss Love Guru, if you're really that experienced, make that guy your boyfriend. Succeed, and I'll give out the love of my life. If not, I'll do as I please. What Blair is daring me to do was impossible. That guy, Adrian, is as popular as Damien. While Damien's the friendly one, Adrian is nicknamed Jack Frost due to his icy cold exterior. Rumor has it, no one has ever seen him crack a smile. Surrender, as expected. Then step aside, sister. Not knowing what else to do, I agreed to the bet. This is for Blair, for Chrissy, for dad's happiness. Hi, Adrian, right? I, I, I'm, uh, are you free tonight? Or whenever. He gave me this cold glance, then went back to chatting with Damien. Please, I'm just trying to win a bet with my sister. One smile from you is enough to save the fate of an entire family and stop two girls becoming homeless. Can you just... Adrian gave me this odd look. Then he burst out laughing and took my hand. Sure thing. Can't wait for our date tonight. I left in a haze of confusion. That really just happened? Adrian must be messing around. But nope, he actually showed up at my doorstep that evening. This meant I'd won the bet, right? So I called Blair over to show her, but she just brushed it off. That proves nothing. Talk to me when Ice Boy professes his love for you. Man, I guess this means I'm going on a date. The tension in here was palpable, so I decided to break the awkward silence. Hey, where are we going? I mean, this isn't actually a real date, is it? It's definitely real. You insisted. I must have looked so dazed that he continued. Don't worry, I'm not messing with you. Anyway, I think you'll like where I'm taking you. I used to think he was incapable of smiling, but turns out he looks even cuter when he does. A drive for cinema? Wow! I'd seen these in old movies, but I had no idea it still existed. So, what's the deal with your sister Chrissy? You mentioned the bet? You know that Chrissy is my sister? Of course, it's not exactly hidden. Besides, I'm friends with Chrissy's boyfriend. So, you know? Yep, there's no secrets between me and Damien. And don't worry, I have his back. So, can you answer my question now? <laughs> I like this different side to Adrian. So before I could stop myself, I told him how the bet wasn't with Chrissy, but with my other sister, Blair. And I was catfishing Blair as Damien to protect my family, but it's barely working. Whoa, that's intense. Secrets make things complicated. Life sure would be easier if we could just be ourselves. So, why did you decide to go on a date with me? Don't you think it's weird? No, not really. Beats how girls normally ask me out. I arrived home feeling on cloud nine. 
But then I walked past Chrissy's room and saw her upset. I asked her what's going on. It's Damien. He wants us to go public. But I told him I'm not ready yet. I like having this part of me private, and I don't want Damien to be open to backlash and scrutiny. But he didn't understand and thought I was embarrassed of him. Oh, Chrissy, what a pain. Give him time, I'm sure he'll come around. But the school performance is in a few days. How am I supposed to take the stage in this state? I hated seeing Chrissy so downhearted like this. And I thought about Adrian and what he said during our date about honesty. I don't know much about the pressures of fame, but I do know that your feelings for Damien are real. I don't think love is something that you should hide. Honesty is the best policy. It might be hard at first, but you can get through it together. Now, come to my case, I should also follow my own advice and put an end to my catfishing before it gets out of hand. I tried hard to think of the best way to break this to Blair while we were walking to school the next day. After much hesitation, I pulled her aside before entering school for a talk. Only, before I could get to the main part, Damien walked past and oddly, Blair didn't do so much as to blink. Seeing my confusion, she said, Yesterday, he ignored all of my messages. You're right, I deserve someone better. Anyway, what did you want to tell me? Oh, that, um, my date with Adrian was amazing. It all happened because of you, so thanks. And sorry about Damien. It's okay. That's strange. Did my smitten sister really just give up that easily? But anyway, at least it's all over now. <sighs> and I don't even have to come clean anymore. The day of Chrissy's performance arrived. Me, Adrian, and Damien had backstage access. Actually, I'm here for emotional support as Chrissy is about to tell everyone about her relationship with Damien. This is a surprise for Damien too. He just thinks we're here to get a better view of Chrissy. <laughs> she slays the performance and the audience adored her. Thanks everyone, thank you so much. Actually, today is an extra special day because I have something. But suddenly Blair stormed onto the stage and snatched Chrissy's mic. How about making it even more special with this breaking news? Everyone, she's had a secret boyfriend all this time. She made the poor guy hide in the shadow so she can keep her squeaky clean image. She's lied to you all for years. Is someone like that worthy of your support? Blair ran off as soon as she finished. Boos start coming from the crowd. Many people began commenting on the situation in true TMZ fashion. What is this, 2009 VMA? No way, my Chrissy is taken? Meanwhile, Chrissy had a panic attack and froze there on the stage. I didn't know what to do. Neither did Damien. Luckily, Adrian kept calm and grabbed the walkie-talkie, connected to Chrissy's in-ear. Chrissy, listen to me. In times like these, there's only one way out, and that's confronting the truth and taking back the narrative. I looked at Adrian and realized something about my own problem. More on that later. For now, let's see how Chrissy handles this. Well, there goes my big reveal. Yes, I'm in a relationship but I only kept it quiet because I wanted to separate my personal life from my professional one. Being a public figure and a teenager at the same time is not as easy as you might think, so I didn't want to drag my loved one into that life too soon. On reflection, maybe this wasn't the best way to deal with this. I won't hide anything from my fans anymore, and those who truly support me won't judge or speak badly of my decision. Everyone, I want you to meet Damien, my boyfriend. The audience went wild. Aw, this is so cute but I still had one more problem to deal with, Blair. I look everywhere and finally found her hiding under the bleaches. Blair, it's just me, please come out. I started to talk about what just happened, but Blair didn't want to hear it. I know everything. You tricked me cause you think I'm an idiot. La 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 la. I let her finish her outburst and calm down. Then I apologized and told her the truth. I only did it because I didn't want you going after a boy who's already taken. I know I went about it in a completely wrong way but I just wanted to keep our family together. I love you, and I don't want to be in the middle of your jealousy towards Chrissy anymore. If you just gave her a chance, you could have just been honest with me. This is all because you prefer Chrissy over me, don't you? No, of course not. I just wanted to protect you and for there to not be any more conflict between you and Chrissy. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Actually, I'm not jealous of Chrissy because she's famous and gorgeous. It's actually because you guys are really close. We used to be that close when our parents divorced, and now it's like I've been replaced. Blair's honesty touched me in the feels. I gave her a big hug, but then realized that we weren't alone. Actually, I'm jealous of you, Blair. You're all Kieran and Eva talks about, and I feel that even though we're close, I can't compete with her real sister. Oh, so the tension between them wasn't just over a boy. It was actually over me. To me, you're both my real sisters, and I love you dearly. Come on, sisterly cuddle.
Oh, by the way, how did you know that I was pretending to be Damien? I overheard your conversation with Chrissy. It didn't take much digging around to figure out it was you texting me, not the real Damien. While we're at it, I find it worrying you were still into him after all those red flags. In future, please let me vet your dates first. You're too easily blinded by good looks. Oh dear, that's why us girls have to stick together, especially when it comes to boys. My precious Sunday is ruined because of my not-so-precious sister, Emma, who insisted on dragging me to church for some sister time. We walked in to see the priest rushing over. Welcome in. You must be our new member, Janet. W whoa Just then, the holy statues nearby all fell over and shattered to pieces. It's a bad omen. She's a jinx. No, no, no! You devil! Get out of here! Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Hi, my name's Janet. If you think I'm a jinx too, you're seriously wrong. Because animators, rewind that last scene, pause it right there, and... See that? That's my sister, Emma. And fast forward a bit more, pan over please. There, that right there is the ringmaster behind my so-called bad luck. You must be wondering why I hadn't exposed Emma that day. It's because everyone is fooled by her naive Cinderella look and never believed how a living angel could do such mischievous deeds. But the truth is, she's the devil. She did everything to make me look like a walking disaster everywhere I go. But who am I, huh? That night, to get back at Emma, I hid under the bed till she was sound asleep, wrapped my icy cold hands around her ankles, jumped out from under the bed, and BOO! Emma screamed through the roof, and our parents walked into the room worried just to see me laughing hysterically. Right then, the police on patrol also barged in, thinking something real wrong went on in our house. We ended up spending the night trying to explain to them nothing happened, and they finally left. Do you know how many sleepless nights we've had just because of you girls' petty fights? That's it! I'm signing you both up to join a community farm from tomorrow. What? But dad, I can't live amongst animals and dirt. For one, I agree with Emma. There's no way I'm going there. You're not going back till you learn to live with each other. Living with Emma 24-7? I'd much rather be the jinx now. So the next morning, mom and dad drove us to the farm to live off the land and bond together. But look at this tranquility and picturesque scenery. Maybe coming here wasn't such a bad idea after all. Suddenly, a loud obnoxious track started playing from inside my suitcase, startling the animals, and they went rogue! Stop the music! But my suitcase was locked. I caught Emma smirking, pressing her phone, and the music suddenly stopped. Once everything was under control, the farmers gave me looks of disapproval. Just when I thought things couldn't be any worse, a trailer nearby slipped off and began to roll downhill, heading straight for an oblivious farmer. Emma immediately swooped in and pushed herself and the farmer out of harm's way just in the nick of time. Richard, are you okay? Oh, yes, thanks to this young lady. You saved my life. What a good luck charm you are. That trailer has been sitting there for ages without any problems. Why did it suddenly break just now? Oh, it's my sister. She has this reputation for bringing bad luck wherever she goes. I apologize on her behalf. No, 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 no. Don't listen to her. She's evil. That's not something you should say to your sister. Look at her. What an angel. Emma immediately activated her manipulating power. Aww. Come on. We got the nicest room for you. <laughs> hey, what about me? The next morning, I was told to milk the cows while Emma didn't even have to lift a finger, just wandering around and pulling pranks on me. In a panic, a guy appeared and helped me out. What happened here? The hoses are all snipped off. I'm so sorry about that. It's my sister's stupid prank to get me to look like bad luck. Interesting. Oh well, we'll hand milk the cows until we get them replaced. Hand milk? That'd take forever! Emma's gonna have to pay. Hey, no need for that. I'll give you a hand. I'm Kai, by the way. He gave the brightest smile, and I instantly felt better. I'm Janet. Thanks for helping me, but which buttons do I push to get milk? Kai cracked up, and I felt like the dumbest thing in the world. I'm sorry, but that was so cute. Okay, you don't push any buttons. You squeeze it, like this. Just then, Sylvia walked by and saw us. Well, well, well. Who makes you smile like that, Kai? Janet, you are really something, huh? As she left, I felt my heart racing and saw Kai blushing also. Who 
Oof, it sure feels hot like summertime. So, Kai, how long have you been living here? Just recently. I'm actually a skier from the city too, but I came here due to some stuff. Come on, let's go sell the milk. Kai and I then made our way to the Buzzly Market. Surprisingly, customers were eager to get their hands on our milk. I was ready to make my first hard-earned cash when suddenly... <clears throat> You'd better watch out. You'd better not buy. Better not drink this milk right here. Jinxie Janet's coming to town. The crowd buzzed with concern over our milk. Actually, I thought someone else was a jinx. You see, our milk is especially fresh today. All thanks to my good luck charm, Janet. She and I worked all morning to milk the cows by hand. Thanks to Kai's words, the crowd was excited again. Just like that, we sold out in just a few hours. Woohoo! But when we got home, people started praising Emma for bringing good luck to the business. Actually, it was Kai and me who milked the cows. And more thanks to Kai who did most of the heavy lifting. She has nothing to do with this. The room suddenly felt awkward and people started to look away. Only Sylvia cared to acknowledge us. I see. You two make a great team. What about us? I think we'll make a better team. Get off of me, you creep! Ouch. Feisty. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Why are you acting like such an animal, Janet? I'm alright. She may be a bit cold right now, but she'll warm up to me in no time. Right, princess? Emma immediately gave me a death stare. Aiden, why are you here? I'm here for you, brother dearest. Mom and dad are worried sick back home. Holy cow, these two are related, but they're nothing alike. Well, it does explain why their tension was scorching up the room. Stop it, you two. Always with the bickering. It's getting late. Janet, will you go and lock the barn door? Oh, oh yes, definitely. But before I reached the barn, a hand suddenly pulled me back. Keep your claws off of Aiden. He's mine. Oh, I see. You're smitten with him, huh? Well, too bad, because he seems to like me instead, sister. How dare you? Emma dashed ahead of me towards the barn, turned all the lights on, blew on the deafening whistle, and the sheep went wild again. I desperately tried to stop the panic herd, but no use. Only when the farmer showed up and let the shepherd dog do his job was the scene under control. This is all your fault. You'll bring us nothing but bad luck and chaos. That's not true. I was trying to help while well, this was Emma's doing. Stop with all the blaming and start learning some manners, will you? <laughs> I was stunned. Behind Richard, Emma grinned slightly. She won this time, but not for long. Because how about I steal Emma's crush, aka Aiden, right in front of her? <laughs> well, actually, I didn't really have to steal anything. Because Aiden always found his way to me first. And he also brought Kai along. It was like something was going on between them, and they kept fighting to get my attention. They showered me with food, fought over the seat next to me at dinner, and wouldn't let me lift anything remotely heavy. It was getting a little annoying, but seeing Emma fuming with jealousy each time is so worth it. <laughs> One afternoon, Kai and I were picking flowers in the field when he gently tucked a flower in my hair. It looks good on you. Then, he lifted my face and leaned in closer. I was floating in the summer breeze, ready for a kiss when we both got shaken up by the engine revving. Aiden? So pretty thing. Wanna go out with a date with me? She's with me. Can't you see? Well, maybe I'm blinded. Blinded by my love for you. Um, how about you two can show some brotherly love and go together, huh? Then I walked off, only to see Emma's blonde head sticking out from the flowers. Hey Aiden, on second thought, I'd love to go with you, shall we? Driving away, I could see Emma furious, and Kai with sad eyes following me? But the thing was, this was hella awkward. I don't feel like flirting if there was no Emma, and he, well, I don't know, couldn't stand it anymore. So I told him to stop at this random clothing store and insisted he try on this fancy suit. Whoa, you cleaned up nicely, huh? Do I not look good usually? Well, you kind of look like a hooligan. <laughs> Is that genuine joy I see on your face? What? I'm always smiling. Oh, really? You and Kai were ready to bite each other's heads off just then. You don't know everything about us, Janet. I know you have a thing for him, but I can never let you two be together. Not this time. We came back to the farm to see Emma waiting for us all agitated. You tramp! Isn't Kai enough for you? Now you're playing the double game with Aiden? And you're just jealous because Aiden doesn't like you. That's right. I only have eyes for Janet. She and Kai were never together. So quit sticking your nose into our business. Emma couldn't utter a word. For the first time, she seemed so vulnerable, then rushed away in tears. Look what you did, brother. Playing with both Emma's and Janet's hearts is a low blow. 
you're one to talk. Wasn't the thing with Tina your low blow? Tina? Tina who? Tina was your crush. I had nothing to do with her. It's about time you get over that. That's not what Tina said. She told me you flirted with her, and you abandoned her when she's falling for you. She lied, okay? She wanted to use you against me, and never once reciprocated her obsessive behaviors. I just want to leave everything behind and enjoy my life here, with her. So Aiden, please, just let us be. Too bad. She seems to like me instead. <laughs> Can't you see? She doesn't care if her sister likes me. She still chose me over you. Dang, those words hit me hard. I didn't realize what I'd done to Emma all along. <sighs> it's time to end all these silly sibling conflicts. Guys, stop. Can't you see you're hurting each other just like Emma and I? Janet, this jerk plays with you and Emma. He deserved a fist or two. No, Kai. I'm not exactly innocent either. I was also using Aiden to get back at Emma. You what? I know, I know. But all these petty revenge doesn't bring us any good. No one wins at all. And honestly, I regretted having hurt Emma. And so should you guys. <laughs> you want this golden boy to drop his sky-high ego? Yeah, good luck with that. I'm not a golden boy, Aiden. <laughs> Are you kidding me? With all your success and skiing trophies, mom and dad can even see me behind all that. When you left home, they freaked out and made me go looking for you. Do you know the reason I quit skiing and left home? Because mom and dad wouldn't stop pressuring me. It's suffocating. Every time I stand on the rink, my whole body shakes like crazy. I'm not perfect, Aiden. And I did not want to take away any attention from you. I'm sorry if you ever feel that way. Well... I didn't know. You could have told us what you'd gone through. To who? To mom and dad? The ones who keep pushing and nagging? Sorry I wasn't there for you. Heck, I was the worst. Right? You two could work this out. Now if you excuse me, I have my own sibling conflict to resolve. I was about to leave when we heard Emma screaming. Fire! Fire! Help! We immediately rushed to her, and the fire already caught on the haystack. It was spreading fast. I, I accidentally knocked over the oil lamp. What do we do now? You go call the firefighter. Aiden, you go get everyone here. Us two, we will go get water. Go, go, go. Kai and I tried our best to pour bucket after bucket of water, but it only stopped the fire from spreading, not put it out. We almost exhausted ourselves when the farmers arrived along with the firefighter. And luckily, after half an hour, everything was under control. Phew. But then, the farmers started surrounding me. It was because of you, isn't it? Every time incidents happen, you're always on the scene. Coincident? I think not. There we go again. But this time, I'm too beat up to even say anything. Then, there was Emma, petrified in fear, so I used every last effort to stand up. That's right, I knocked over the oil lamp and caused this fire. What are you doing? It's okay, I'm used to this. No, it was my fault. Janet's just trying to take the ball. In fact, this whole time, I was the one doing all the damage and blaming it on Janet. Was this for real? Emma standing up for me? You! Is this some kind of childish joke? You could have really harmed everyone here. This is our life work, not your girls' playground. I, I'm truly sorry. That's it. Tomorrow morning, you'll have to leave here for good. Both of you. We had no choice but to call our parents to pick us up. Meanwhile, I gotta pack my stuff. Hey. I know I've been mean to you since forever, so why did you still take the blame for me? I'm just tired of petty fights. Besides, I feel bad for stealing Aiden away from you. I don't have any feelings for him, and I don't think he falls for me either. I just wanted to mess with you. I figured. Um, I actually heard what you guys were talking about before, and it hit me hard. You know, I used to enjoy being the only child. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but honestly, when you came, it felt like all the attention and love was stripped away from me. I felt so lonely and jealous, so I decided to make you the center of attention, but in the worst way possible. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all in the past now. I just want us to get along. And me not be called a jinx anymore. You got it. The next morning, our parents arrived all angry. We were so ready for a long-term grounding. But once they saw us holding hands, they were pleased. Honey, I think your plan worked. I knew it. You two can be little troublemakers, but deep down, you still love each other. Come on, let's go home. Can we just wait for a few minutes? I don't want to leave without saying goodbye to Kai. But what took him so long? I gotta get going. Then Kai finally showed up. Wait up! I rushed out of the car and ran to give him a big hug. I thought you wouldn't come to say goodbye. How could I not? Especially when you forget the most important thing. Really? What is it? It's me, you silly. Oh, you're coming back to the city? Yes, I have a reason to be back now. To the city, to skiing, and what is it? It's you. Suddenly, a tree fell over right beside us and crashed the mailbox, causing all of the mail to fly out. <laughs> you really are bad luck, aren't you? Hey, that tree was already rotten. 
And don't you think that it barely missing us means I'm good luck? I'm just kidding. Hey y'all! Your one and only Miley Cyrus is back once again with the Spencer sisters story. Things were getting more complicated, right? Where were we? Oh yeah, Scarlett was determined to bring keyboard warriors who cyberbullied her and Naomi to justice. And soon, she accomplished just that. But Scarlett was shocked to her core to see a familiar face among them. That's Naomi? What in the world? Even your girl is shooketh. What's gonna happen next? Let's find out in this episode. From the moment their eyes met, Scarlett was completely dumbfounded. Scarlett, I, I... Why? How could you, Naomi? Naomi said nothing and just kept her head down, but Scarlett could no longer stand on her own feet. I'm okay. Naomi, a word, please. Why do you look like this? And why you did this? You know what? When those constant waves of comments tormented me, do you know how I kept my head above water? I told myself, I don't really know them. Their words can never hurt me. But I can't wrap my head around the fact that the one hurting me is my own sister. As soon as Athena got news from Scarlet, she dashed to the police station and then arrived in the middle of the sister's argument. Scarlet. Before you call me the worst names in existence, I want you to trust me and know that it's simply how I handle stress. Seriously? Hear me out. I was so happy for you in the beginning, but eventually jealousy just started creeping in. I felt small and insignificant living under the same roof as a head-turning popular big sister. It got worse when people on the internet started comparing me to you and I felt like I was nothing but a piece of trash. Gradually I found myself coming to your haters forum, and that's a slippery slope. Being among them made me feel like I mattered, like those people actually listened to what I had to say. It's like I was finally someone, and I didn't want it to end. Before Scarlet could react, Athena couldn't stop herself from sobbing out loud, and the girls saw her. Mom? Mom? To their surprise, Athena suddenly slumped down. It's all my fault. I led you two down this path. Never have Scarlet seen Athena like this, and neither did Naomi. Where had the icy, tyrant woman gone? Naomi, you have to stop before it's too late. It will eat you up and swallow you whole. Sorry, Mom, but if you're really my mother, you shouldn't have stopped me when you refused to help me. You could have just let me do whatever I wanted, and I could have figured it out the hard way myself. And from now on, I want to be free from you. I want people to know me as me, Naomi, not your sister. We belong in different worlds. N Naomi, I can't even recognize you anymore. Naomi didn't say a thing and was going to leave, but police officers immediately seized her. Just let it go. Then Scarlet and Athena returned to the suspect's lineup and saw that Finn was still there with an anxious look on his face. Scarlet, where have you been? You okay? Scarlet couldn't hold her anger any longer and screamed at the lineup. See how you've ruined our lives? Happy now? You carelessly threw around that bone-crushing, hateful language just for fun and never paid those on the other end any mind. Now you'll face my wrath. You're Athena Kingsley of Elite Talent Management, aren't you? Why you... Oh, yeah. I am... Um... My mother! Come again? Yeah, she's my mother. Don't act so surprised. Mom, this is Finn, my agency's creative director. I'll go with her. Get home safe, okay? Wait here. I'll get the car. While waiting for Scarlet, Athena and Finn had a little chat. It's a pleasure to meet the famous Ms. Kingsley. I've heard great things about you. Oh, you've made quite a name for yourself as well, Mr. Finn Simpson. Well, that would be exaggerating. Him. I see the way you look at Scarlet. I can tell there's something bubbling under it. She might look like a tough cookie, but she's my sweet, sensitive girl. Treat her well, or I'll crush you into a fine powder and scatter it on Mount Oblivion. You hear me? <laughs> yes, loud and clear. <laughs> and Naomi, that girl's quite a handful, isn't she? Since she's under your management as well, keep an eye on her for me, would you? Yes, ma'am. Can't forget that. Right then, Scarlet halted the car in front of them. Mom, let's go. Finn, you're still here? Well, I'll see you again soon. Bye. Scarlet and her mom didn't say a word the whole way. Perhaps they were both exhausted from today's crazy mess. If it were me, I would just lie down and sleep it off like a log till morning. Unexpectedly, Athena blurted out, Scarlet, could you take me to your dad now? Why so sudden? Because I was still mad and didn't want to see his face. No, the truth is, I'm a coward who wouldn't dare face him. Until today do I have the guts. They drove to her father's hospital room to find him sleeping peacefully. Let me wake him up. It's all right. Let him sleep. Then Scarlet went out to give them some privacy. Remember me? It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? How come we only met again when you can't hear a word I say? 
let alone answer. I know you're still mad at me, and I was mad at you, too, but I've learned to live with it, and seeing how well you raised our babies made me feel much more at ease. I've done nothing to help them all these years, yet they turned on each other all because of me. I promise I'll make things right. Trust me, and please, forgive me. Then Athena left right away, but little did she know, her voice did reach him. If anything happens, call me right this instant, okay? Right after their goodbye, Scarlet received a text message from Finn. Wanna go for a walk? <coughs> this is the first time I've been to the beach at night. I love how serene it is. How did you find such a cool place? There's so much you don't know about me. <laughs> then they sat down for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. The gentle breeze and the sound of waves soothed their jaded souls. Um, things do be crazy, right? Kind of. But you've been so strong. I'm sorry for dragging you into this. And thank you for staying by my side. <sighs> it's been a while since I felt this calm. And so long since I saw your carefree smile. By the way, I just saw the news about an influencer contest, which sounds interesting. Isn't it American Influencer? Yeah, I was about to tell you too. Want to sign up? Do you think I can win? Of course I do. You're good at everything you do, especially messing with me. I mean, my thoughts. <laughs> Okay, then where shall I begin? My looks, retake a soft skill course, and... and... Enough about work, okay? Scarlet was taken aback, then went with the flow. They gave each other the sweetest kiss ever. The golden moonlight shining on the shimmering sea made the night even more romantic. Okay, guys, you've seen enough movies to know what's happening. Shall we talk about Naomi a bit? After the incident at the police station, she had a mental breakdown for a week straight and isolated herself from the rest. She lived like a zombie in her own apocalypse till one day. I've dwelled in misery long enough. This calls for a rebirth. Let the best version of me be born. And so she entered her transformation era, invigorated and ready. She even chopped off her long hair and went through minor plastic surgery to add some highlights to her face. I got the sort of perfect looks down. Nothing will stand in my way of success. Wow, gotta admit, she's kinda rocking this cool new look. Reminds me of my wrecking ball era. During this time, Naomi still replied to her mom in Scarlett's messages, but meeting up was still a no-no. The only one she saw regularly was her dad, to whom she could pour out all her thoughts. I'm much better now. You don't have to come so often anymore. This much back and forth is gonna wear you out. It's what I wanna do. Anyway, I'll be a bit busy this time around, so I actually can't see you as much. Please rest up so you can come home and celebrate my accomplishments. All right, you betcha. Better get going then. Don't make them wait. As soon as Naomi left, Mr. Spencer's smile disappeared. His expression was of pure agony. Maybe he's not doing as well as we thought. Hi, Finn. Long time no see. Naomi, you look different, but in a good way. Listen, I've thought it through. I want to go professional. Help me, will you? Yeah, sure. I want to join. No, I'll win this competition. As if on cue, Scarlet appeared. Naomi? Oh, Scarlet, perfect timing. Naomi, featuring her brand new appearance, is back. Do you know how worried I am? Come on, she must have her own reason. Truce? By the way, Scarlet, have you decided on the influencer contest? Naomi is in it too. The stage is all yours, ladies. She's joining too? No, two sisters competing against each other in the same competition at this time is like kicking off the Third World War. No thanks, I'm not interested anymore. Losing interest all of a sudden? I want to compete fair and square with you, so put away that patronizing attitude. I don't need it. No, I don't. I just... Fine, watch me. Come on, relax, relax, relax. You both win, okay? Scarlet and Naomi exchanged sulky looks, but can't hold it for long before bursting out laughing for no reason. Come to think of it, Naomi is very much like your mom, full of determination and ambition. Yeah, I took after dad and got the easy going gene. I guess that happens to every sibling duo. True to her words, Scarlet followed a laid back lifestyle, which drew lots of fans to her. Now, this is not just a job, but also a passion of hers, sharing good tips and spreading positive energy to everyone. Meanwhile, Naomi was hard at work to be ready for the competition. She tried, tried, and tried to grow in every aspect and pushed herself hard in the gym. She also read tons of books, enjoyed courses to enhance every skill she thought might be necessary. 24 hours a day didn't seem enough. There were days when she worked her butt off till bedtime, and she simply let her body crawl into deep sleep without changing into her PJs or doing her nighttime skincare routine. Still, Athena and Scarlett always kept a worried eye on Naomi. Naomi, Naomi we, we can, can help. help! I'm sorry, but I need to focus. I'm so sorry. I want to make you proud, and I can't afford any distraction. 
When Scarlett told Finn, he said he'd handle this. Since then, Finn spent more time with Naomi and her advisor, and they became close. Scarlett saw how Naomi brightened up, but couldn't help but feel uneasy. Of course she'd feel that way, Finn spending less time with her. Scarlett, wake up! Now is not the time for this nonsense! Eh, I feel you, girl. There's something I hadn't told you. After that night's big kiss, Finn professed his love, and they became an item! Yay! The competition finally commenced. Scarlett, Athena, and Finn were in the audience awaiting Naomi's performance. Out of the blue, Scarlett got a call from her dad's personal nurse. Scarlet, your dad's condition is getting real bad. You'd better get here now. Should we tell Naomi about this? Of course we should. Yes, you'll regret not telling her. Right then, the host announced it's Naomi's turn. Scarlet immediately ran up and dragged Naomi backstage. Naomi, we have to go. It's dad. He's getting worse, I'm afraid. W what D dad I just saw him a few days ago, and he was fine. Why now? I don't know. Scarlet, I'm sorry, but this is my last chance. Please take care of him for me. I have to go. Then Scarlet, Athena, and Finn immediately left. But they were only a few steps away when they saw Naomi black out on stage. At the same time, Mr. Spencer was also fighting his own battle. His prognosis was bad. We're sorry. We've tried our best. No! 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 Dad! 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 Please don't go. Dad! You're awake. Calm down. What were you dreaming about to be sweating like this? Dad, where's Dad? Then there was a familiar voice from the bed next to hers. I'm right here. It's truly a blessing that Mr. Spencer's no longer in critical condition. And you, you fainted on stage and were taken to the ER. Some time had passed when their dad and Naomi became stable. I couldn't remember the last time we went here together. I still remember how much I hated this place, but now I think it's grown on me. I can kind of appreciate it now. Why did you suddenly want to go home and leave everything behind? I've always wanted to make something of myself, so I chased after something I didn't really understand like crazy. The moment I saw Dad left us for heaven, I felt dead on the inside. Even though it was just a dream, I can now look back and safely say I was wrong all this time. You know, to me, being in show business means creating values for your audience. Fame is sort of a byproduct, not the end result. Being famous feels almost unreal, like a fever dream. Those who flatter us today might turn their back on us the next day. Only familiar love will remain till the end unconditionally. Mr. Spencer returned to his beloved diner, and today's special since these four were giving him a hand. Sit down. I got this. Hey, my help expires today, old man. Enjoy it when you can. I ain't here tomorrow. Oh, hey, I saw your dot on TV yesterday. She really is going places. She's a whole package. A beautiful face and a heart of gold. I saw her on a charity program, too. Scarlet was still shining bright in her own way. You're actually looking at the receiver of the Influencer of the Year Award. But now, she's got another loyal fan for herself. All right, that's about it, folks. Poof! Just telling you guys this story gave me a spinning headache. Luckily, everyone has their own happy ending. Scarlet and Finn are getting engaged next month. Oops, that's not in the script. Shh! I didn't tell you nothing. Being famous seems great and all. But remember, don't let it control you. Comment below if you want to see me in another episode. Mwahs! So, the data needs to be collected by Friday so we can... I lowered my head and stuffed a pretzel into my mouth. Danny, are you eating? My boss glared back at me. I wiped my mouth onto the back of my hand and with cheeks full of food muffled out, no, no, of course not. It turns out my eagerness to eat a delicious, salty, crunchy pretzel during a work meeting, I'd forgotten to turn my microphone off. Oops. Hey, so I'm Danny, and I'm in love with food. Why, you ask? Well, food's the one thing that's always been there for me. Through the good times and the bad, it's never let me down. All it takes is a hamburger with extra cheese, and a salted caramel cheesecake, and I'm a happy girl. Gee, I'm salivating just thinking about it. But then my love of food almost cost me everything. Here's how. So after the pretzel incident, my boss fired me. Harsh. I know. This left me with no job, and as a result, no money to buy tasty snacks. What a bummer. One night, I was lounging on the couch, watching a movie and daydreaming about eating a triple chocolate sundae, 
when Jake, my boyfriend, sat down next to me with a huge bowl of candy and started telling me about his work colleague's birthday party. Ooh, candy. I grabbed a handful and started shoveling it into my mouth. Thanks, Jake. He knew the way to my heart. In between munching, I asked him, Can you bring a plus one? I want to go with you. Please? He shrugged and said, Sure. I clapped my sticky hands together. Ooh, a party! This was so exciting, as parties meant there'd be food and lots of it. As soon as we arrived there, I made a beeline for the buffet table. OMG! This was amazing. There were club sandwiches, mini pizzas, and potato salad bowls. I lifted the entire serving bowl up and started spooning the food into my mouth. Then some woman appeared next to me, frowning. She said, Um, excuse me, please, can you not eat out of the serving bowl? With my mouth full, I replied, Oh, sorry, it it tastes so good. Then I placed the bowl back down and grabbed a handful of potato chips. As she walked away, I heard her mutter under her breath, what a greedy guts. Eventually, Jake grabbed my arm and led me out of there. He was sulking and could barely meet my eye, so I asked him what was up. What's up? He grunted. Do you even need to ask? You sit around all day eating everything out of the cupboards. Then when I bring you along to my colleague's party, you hog the buffet? It was so embarrassing. This bummed me out. Um... I guess maybe I could have a little more self-control around party food. And I guess I did need to find a job. Besides, having money meant I could buy better snacks, and I wouldn't have to keep on taking Jake's. So I got a part-time job at my local cinema, on the popcorn counter. Mmm, that sweet, buttery popcorn smell. How I adored it. I couldn't help it. It was there staring at me, in all of its warm, golden stickiness. So in between serving a customer, I sneakily stuffed some into my mouth. What are you doing? My heart stopped as I heard a familiar voice behind me. I turned around and came face to face with my manager. I denied immediately. I I wasn't doing anything. As popcorn popping out of my mouth, they shouted at me and accused me of eating all the profits. So unfair. So you guessed it, I was fired. Again. I arrived home early with a tear-stained face and a bag full of my favorite chocolate treats to cheer me up. Jake looked over at me from the couch and asked me what was up. I slumped down next to him, pulled the wrapper off a chalk bar, and said, I got fired again. I couldn't help it. It, It's popcorn. It's too tasty. Does this world need to be so cruel? Then I took a bite out of the chocolate. Mmm, delicious. Jake shook his head, then sighing, said, Danny, admit it. It's your gluttony that gets you into trouble. So what? I enjoy eating, that's all. It doesn't hurt anyone. I finished the chalk bar and started unwrapping the next one. Jake shook his head, then walked off. Whatever. I didn't need his support, as I had delicious chocolate to comfort me. Yum. One day, like every other day, I searched the house for snacks but nope, there weren't any anymore. I didn't have any money, so I couldn't go to the shop. So instead, I went on my phone and searched mukbang videos to kill some time. As I watched two girls stuff their mouths full of french fries dipped in a strawberry shake, I had an idea. Of course. Why hadn't I thought of this earlier? I should become a mukbanger. I'd get to earn money while doing what I love, eating food. It was a win-win. For my first video, I kept it simple. It was just me in a white t-shirt, my phone as a camera, and a huge bowl of spaghetti. Crazily, people watched it and began following me. After a couple of videos, my popularity increased and my viewers started donating food and money to me. It was totally nuts. But with these things came the video requests, such as eat three tubs of fried chicken and ten plates of fried rice covered in mayo. Eating all this food did get kind of challenging. Once I was halfway through a hamburger eating video when I got a stitch in my stomach and had to stop. I so shouldn't have eaten pancakes for breakfast earlier. My fans were bummed out that I stopped the challenge and I felt really bad. I figured that if I was going to make this my job, then I'd have to start fasting beforehand so I could be at my best for the videos. Gee, this was hard work. One time I was so hungry, I went into the fridge and sniffed the cheese. 
But then when I finished a challenge, I felt so full and bloated that I resembled a puffer fish. Then there was the tiredness. I was so exhausted. I fell asleep on the bus to the supermarket and ended up in some weird town miles away. I had to ring Jacob to come and pick me up, and he grumbled about it for the whole way back. Regardless of this, I carried on with the videos. But then one day a fan challenged me to the biggie, the fire noodle challenge. If you don't know what this is, then basically it involves a massive bowl full of the spiciest noodles ever. I took a mouthful of the noodles and OMG, I couldn't feel my tongue or face. My nose was running and I had to stick my tongue out to check if it was still there. This was just too much. There's no way I could endure any more of this. So I switched the bowl for non-spicy noodles and pretended I was eating the hot ones. Afterward, I edited the video and hey, I think I did a great job of faking it. Even though I'd only had one mouthful of the spicy stuff, It was repeating on me. My stomach gurgled and my tongue still felt numb. I lay on the couch with the hot water bottle pressed to my stomach and feeling sorry for myself. Jake sat down next to me and gave me a concerned look. Danny, you gotta stop this video thing and get a real job. With my swollen tongue, I managed to sputter out, Eating in videos is a real job. Jake shook his head. Gluttony is not a hobby. Everyone's just laughing at you. Um, hello. I was being paid for eating, and these videos help many lonely people out there to have company during a meal. They were laughing with me, not at me. Jeez, Jake was so boring at times. Between the spicy noodle challenge and some weird bug eating challenge in which I used jelly worms covered in chocolate instead of the real deal, faking became the norm for me. Soon the articles started circulating saying I was a fake eater. Posts such as, she's faking all the time, and no wonder she's still in shape, popped up everywhere. After that, I had no choice but to live stream eat. Lots of my fans encouraged this, but it was hard work. It didn't take long for the weight to pile on, and within a month, I was up two dress sizes, and I felt super sluggish. One morning when Jake saw me searching my wardrobe for something, anything to wear that would fit me, he suggested we go jogging. I stared down at my favorite jeans that I now couldn't get past my thighs and agreed to go. I had made it to the end of the block and, whoa, it was hot and, ugh, I couldn't breathe. I was crouched over, clutching a fence for support when a pregnant woman walked by. You're such an inspiration. Running at your age and after giving birth, even without this one, she clutched her bump, I wouldn't be able to manage it. What? Did she think I just had a baby and I was old? Oh, great. And now Jake burst out laughing too. I felt terrible. Did I really look that bad? This lingered in my mind, so I ended up going online and ordering some weight loss pills. I started taking them and within a week I had breakouts, stinky breath, awful wind, and I felt like a slug. Then one time I was in the kitchen taking the pills when Jake walked in saw what I was doing, snatched them out of my hand, and said, Danny, look at you. You're a mess. You have to stop the pills and stop the videos. I was angrier than a nest of disturbed wasps, so I snatched the pills off him and kicked him out of the room. Then I yelled, You don't get it! Just leave me alone! Jake didn't say much to me after that, and I carried on with my mukbang bubble. Soon I hit 100,000 subscribers, and to celebrate, I went live with the table packed full of my favorite foods, fried chicken, pizza, donuts, and so on. I was stuffing my face when I felt so hot and sticky, the room began to spin. I slurred out, I I don't feel so good. Then I fainted in the middle of a live stream. I woke up a few hours later in the hospital with a drip in my arm and a serious face doctor glaring down at me. They told me that I had high cholesterol, and if I carried on like this, I'd end up with diabetes and stomach bleeding. Well, that was it. I burst into tears and vowed that I would make some big changes. I love eating. That will never change. But I just can't do the mukbang videos anymore. Now, I still enjoy food, but I don't overindulge anymore. Oh, I also have a new job working in a restaurant, and amazingly, I've managed to resist eating all of the tasty-looking food. 
I'm on the way to becoming the cute, confident version of myself again. And from now on, if I'm happy, sad, or whatever, well, I talk to Jake about it instead of turning to food. I will always love food, but I guess I eventually figured out that I love my health and Jake even more. Shh, don't tell him that. It'll give him a big head. Hi, it's your girl Miley again. Let's get on with Scarlett's life story, which was left on a cliffhanging slap. Watch your tongue. Regardless, we won't be working together. That's final. Tell me, are you scared people will figure out that I'm your daughter? Right, you never even came to see my frail bedridden father. I never needed a mother like you anyway. Then a smack landed on Scarlett's face. She held her left cheek, eyes wide open, and glared at the person standing in front of her with great fury. Scarlett immediately began venting to Naomi as soon as she got home. No way, this is bad. Without a management company, it's really hard to maintain your popularity. I could not care any less. <laughs> but obviously, Scarlett cared a lot. <sighs> I've put so much effort into this, and now it's all going down the drain? Meanwhile, Naomi was more relieved than sorry. What now? I won't tell you what you want to hear. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and you're too young to have enough willpower for it. That describes my sister, don't you think? What's wrong? Talk to me. I can't take this anymore. She is vicious. She doesn't give a flying crap that I beat myself up trying and orders me around like a puppet. This is draining me day by day. I'm exhausted. When the video ended, Athena stayed quiet for a bit, then asked Naomi to leave. What about me? I'll think about it. So, Naomi returned home and awaited Athena's call, but days had gone by and not a single word from her mother, not even when Scarlett got kicked out. After that fierce fight, Scarlett had to move into this shabby motel. Sheesh, where did she go? She might be mad at me, but she can't lash out like this. This woman has the audacity to call me after all that. Ugh, who needs Athena and her company? I can do this myself. Yahtzee! There's still one event I got invited to. That's my chance! Of course, she asked Naomi to help and be her plus one, who happily agreed. But without the usual professional team, it took the girls too long to get ready, so they missed the red carpet ceremony of the fashion show. Luckily, Scarlett could still start networking at the after party. However, her social battery was draining fast, since she didn't know anyone here. Her eyes were darting around nervously, while Naomi ran about with a little kid's excitement. That body of yours is absurd, and even more mind-blowing up close. Have a drink with me, would you? No thanks! Uh, my date is getting my drink! Sorry! What? You think you ate? And nobody like you is lucky to even have my attention. Excuse me, is this guy bothering you? No, uh, actually, yes. What took you so long, b baby Sorry, babe, there was a long line. Phew. Their charade works like a charm, and because of that, our shy girl got to know this gentleman. He's Finn, an art director slash princess maker at Creative Artists Agency. Going independent is really tough, especially for newcomers. If you work with us, you'll have more options to your liking. I mean, it's your personal brand. For real, though? Ahem. Finn, this is my sister Naomi. Say hi, Naomi. <laughs> nice to meet you two. From that day on, Scarlett had been under Finn's management. He's so gentle and such a smooth talker, but when it comes to work, Finn can be pretty harsh. No, this whole fit makes you five feet tall, and that tops from last year's collection. Try to keep up. But how? I literally have to dive into multiple paths just to find something that isn't a size zero. You might think a personal stylist could make this easier, but your audience can sense that it's not authentically you, and it'll just be much harder for you to build rapport. I can see you have quite a personality. You just don't know how to show it through your style yet. All right. That's actually really profound. I never thought about this stuff that way. Stuff? So what got you into this? That prompted Scarlett to tell him everything. Surprisingly, that guy seemed like a good listener. That is some story. Still, you managed to build a following mostly thanks to your genuine charm. I believe I can teach you more about this stuff and make you fall in love. With real fashion, I mean. And here I thought he was gonna judge me. Ever since she had a handsome, um, patient trainer guiding her every step, Scarlett gradually gained more respect and interest for what she was doing. Their relationship eventually became more intimate and went beyond the professional boundary. It looked like they knew each other in their past lives. Here, one tasty reward for you. Yes! 
Oh, hang on. I'm on a diet. Consider today your cheat day. Something to keep you motivated. Come on, an ice cream won't put you in a food coma. You're right. Oh, sorry. You're such a klutz. It was smooth sailing for Scarlet. One day out of the blue, a mukbanger appeared on her For You page. And that's... Naomi! How long has this been going on? Why didn't you tell me? Who are you working with? None of your business. Excuse me? I didn't say anything. I was gonna say, eating a humongous amount of food like that can be bad. Maybe? Maybe you're against this because you're afraid I'll take all your spotlight. Ain't that right? Oh, no use talking to her right now. Perhaps I can ask Finn for advice. To her utmost surprise, Scarlet saw that Naomi was with Finn. In the long run, you'll either develop a terrible eating habit, or worse, an eating disorder. This is your one and only body. Take good care of it. Everything's going as planned, don't worry. I won't get fat no matter how much I eat. Stay calm, Scarlet. Don't barge in and interrogate them. No! Finn! I can't believe you brought Naomi down that road. I asked him to. Interfere again and we're no longer sisters. Those traitors thought they're so smooth. Fine, let the Cold War begin. On the other hand, Finn tried to make amends, but to no avail. I didn't have the chance to explain myself. Scarlet's emotional state took a nosedive, while Naomi's mukbang channel blew up. Needless to say, she was absolutely delighted. See, I am on Scarlet's level. I already got millions of hearts and a dedicated fan base. Little did Naomi know, praise is often followed by criticism and haters. Look at this pufferfish's face. <laughs> I don't think it's because she's stuffing her face constantly. Girl just got played by genetics. Girls, be nice. Why are you defending that ugly glutton? That's my sister. Problem much? I can't sit still and let her do this to herself. But who could possibly get to her? Definitely not me. In the evening, Scarlet saw that she had hundreds of missed calls, all from Athena. What does she want now? We already went our separate ways. However, that prompted Athena to come see her, at her place. Please, don't make a scene. I'm here to talk. You are making a scene, showing up here. What do you want? It's about Naomi. I am worried about her. That finally convinced Scarlet to have a talk with Athena, which led them to an unexpectedly long discussion about their family. I'm not asking for your sympathy, but you should know how we cut ties. Your dad and I are polar opposites. I wanted the hustle and bustle in life, but your dad wanted a peaceful life in the country. I did try to raise a family with him back there. God knows I tried. But that ain't me. So, when I left, your dad was so angry, he banned me from ever returning. Don't you dare bring that face here one more time! Leave us alone! Since then, I could only watch you two from afar. If it makes you feel any better, he took care of us very well. He's a family man, always has been, and Naomi. I soon realized that she's my spitting image. Impulsive, chipper, yet naive. I didn't want her to be in show business, especially this young, or else she'd make the same mistake I did. That's why you were my pick. I never intended for us to fall out. I, I truly wanted a wealthy life for you, and I thought I could train you into a star like I did every other girl. So when I heard you say how exhausted and trapped you felt living with me, I decided to end it as well as your suffering. What? When did I tell you that? Actually, Naomi told me. You're not supposed to know this. Oh, turns out her action that day was triggered by Naomi. Did my sister do that because she was looking out for me and simply thought I wouldn't tell mom myself? Or was there any hidden motive? I'll have to find out myself. If we didn't have this heart to heart today, our feud might go on forever. Come to think of it, her iciness could have been the product of the cold, harsh show business. Their mother-daughter talk went on till dawn. Scarlet also told her that she hated this job at first, but slowly warmed up to it and now wanted to commit to it, which made Athena really happy. At the same time, Naomi's videos gained more viewership as well as so many hate comments she couldn't ignore. Anyone reading such remarks about themselves would more or less be upset. Sensitive Naomi got a panic attack. Right at that moment, Scarlet stepped into her room, realized what was happening and hurried over to catch Naomi. Then she put her in a fetal position. A few minutes later, Naomi calmed down. Feeling any better? Yes, I can breathe normally now. Thank you. Then stop your monkey business this instant! I talked to Mum. She said you're not ready to be an influencer, and I agree with her. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Mom doesn't know me. She didn't raise me or help me become famous. And now she's getting you on her side to go against me? 
I thought the same. Until we spoke, we misunderstood her, Naomi. And you, still worried about me stealing your thunder? We'll see who's more famous and rich. I've had enough of you. Naomi's reaction was so scary. Scarlet couldn't believe this person was her sister. When Naomi stormed off, she didn't have the strength to go after her either. Was I too much? No, absolutely not. She deserved it for what she did. Scarlet can never understand what it's always like to feel inferior, less important, or constantly trying to escape her shadow. As Scarlet was having a migraine because of her sister, she suddenly received Finn's message, which was asking to see her that evening. He told her to come to this cafe. Although Scarlet was still mad at Finn, she wanted to hear him out, seeing how urgent his texts were. It's Naomi. She's resorting to problematic measures to avoid weight gain. Her staff said that she always tries to purge in the bathroom after shooting each video. So I kept an eye on her, and also saw her starving herself for days before going on camera, or drinking slimming tea. I got worried, but can't do much about it, because, well, I'm not her manager anymore. I saw her this afternoon, but she won't listen to me now. Have you tried talking to her? I haven't been able to get a hold of her since this morning. Ugh! Scarlet, I'm so sorry. I wanted to help Naomi because I saw her passion burn so bright. So I hooked her up with the right people and such. And mostly because I wanted you to like... Uh, never mind. Meanwhile, Naomi was somewhere no one could find her. She curled into a ball, eyes glued to her phone. I'm such a big fat loser. Right then, Scarlet's phone got a text message. It's from Naomi. Scarlet's face darkened as she read it. I'm doing fine, but I need some time for myself, so I'll be away for a while. Don't look for me. At this point, we should put aside our differences and search for Naomi together. Both Finn and Scarlet looked everywhere, but found no info on Naomi's whereabouts. It's like she vanished into thin air or used ninja's technique to hide herself. Also, Scarlet was really busy fulfilling her duties as a model. This is so weird. Naomi can't go a day without updating her story. But it's been days without anything new on all of her socials. All right, you're a little pale lately, Scarlet. It's one thing to worry about Naomi, but take care of yourself, okay? Like you care? Of course I do. You are my sole focus now. Don't just push me away. Aw, who can stay mad at someone this sweet? Since Scarlet and Finn resumed their collaboration, her popularity soared. However, they made no progress in finding Naomi, which upset Scarlet. Even though she's surrounded by fancy material stuff, she wasn't truly at ease. All of a sudden, hashtag cancel Scarlet became number one on Twitter's trending page. Then multiple screenshots of seriously problematic tweets that are supposedly from Scarlet's account surfaced, causing more public backlash. Obviously, she got boycotted, which led to her follower count plummeting and her losing contracts with multiple brands. Despite the company's effort to clear everything up, the damage was done. The fact that those photos were fake couldn't stop keyboard warriors from attacking her, and Scarlett had to face horrible insults on a daily basis. So, all this time, Naomi had to deal with this kind of stuff? That must have been mentally excruciating, especially since she couldn't share with anyone. And I even reprimanded her. Naomi, where are you now? I'll definitely find out who's behind all of that. Cyberbullies must pay. You all think you can hide behind your screen and spit out whatever filthy words you know to bring down people with a reputation to uphold. You picked the wrong targets this time. It wasn't easy, but thanks to the company's resources, Scarlet's team managed to track down everyone who ever made hate comments against the sisters and brought them to the police. But when Scarlet came down to the station and saw the lineup, an astonishing sight welcomed her. One of them was Naomi. Hi, I'm Donna, an influencer extraordinaire and soon to be supermodel. My family are my biggest supporters. Look, there's my sister Charlotte. Even though my parents are busy running the family corporation, they buy me whatever I want. This includes this spectacular dress for the upcoming Elite Model Look Contest. Girls, get ready! We're eating out tonight! Yay! Charlotte just helped Dad secure another business contract, so it's time to celebrate! At the restaurant, Mom, Dad, and Charlotte walked ahead while I showed my 329,587 followers around. My fans even commented that I should compete for Miss USA! Suddenly, someone bumped into me, causing me to drop my phone. Oh no! My live stream's ended, and it's all his fault! Idiot! You ruined my live stream! Now my fans will think I'm rude and unfollow me. Are you walking with your eyes closed? Sorry, I didn't mean to. 
Let me make it up for you. Donna the Fabulous? Okay, you've just got one more follower. What a jinx. He better stay out of my sight. But as soon as I reached our table, I saw his face again. Why is he here? Donna, this is Matthew, our new finance director. Oh, how important. But not as much as live streaming, right? Who does he think he is? Charlotte even laughed at his stupid joke. Speaking of which, Donna, you're going to study business from now on. Time to stop those modeling live streaming things. What? But why? You've always supported my dreams before. But Dad just ignored me and chatted with Matthew. Dad was being so unreasonable. Everything was fine until that Matthew guy showed up. Charlotte comforted me and suggested we attend business classes for me while I prepared for the modeling contest. What a brilliant idea! Oh, I love my amazing quick-witted sister! I then put all of my focus into practicing for the contest. But Matthew kept on disturbing me with his nonsense. He even sent me a picture of wedding rings saying, Are these okay? Think they'll match us? I frantically called him to ask him what all the gibberish was about. Hasn't your dad told you yet? We're getting engaged and taking charge of the company together. What on earth is this guy saying? Since when was I expected to marry some guy I barely knew and take over a business I had no interest in? Dad should have some explanation for this. Upon arriving home, I confronted Dad, but he just sighed and said he was planning on telling me himself. But you can't just dictate my career and who I marry. Donna, I only want the best for you. But Dad, Donna didn't even attend her business classes and is still indulging in her nonsense fashion club. How can you expect her to handle the company? Oh no, why is she telling him that? Was she trying to help me? She's right, Dad. I have no interest in business at all. I can't. If that's the case, then you can start as vice president and get some hands-on experience. And you, Charlotte, you'll be Donna's personal assistant and support her. No! This is not how you want it to turn out. Dad used to love us both, but now he didn't even listen. Ugh, yes, Charlotte, my savior. She would surely know what to do. I can't believe it. I've tried so hard to prove myself, only to have everything given to a simple-minded fool like you. S simple minded That's what you really think of me? Well, I guess I just gotta take my new position to show her how simple-minded I am then. So the next morning, I dolled up and strutted to the company lobby under a different name, Miss Vice President. Huh, look at those gawking eyes wishing they could escape from the boring suits. Matthew was there too, and was he laughing? Suddenly, my heel got tangled up in my dress and I tripped over. What a disaster. Matthew offered me his hand and asked if I was okay. Who needs his help? And all the silly chatters? Just wait and see. And by that, I mean now. Matthew introduced me to the company's core members and announced some new strategic goals for the company. ROI, margin, accounts. Jeez, what kind of language is he speaking? After what seemed like an eternity, he asked if anyone wanted to add anything. Aha! I, of course, couldn't miss a chance to show my leadership. This office is seriously lacking some colors. Violet blinds would be a good start, and some motivational pictures really help boost productivity. Oh, you mean putting up motivational quotes? Oh, please, no. Motivation comes from the all-time fashion greats. You know, Bella Hadid, Tyra Banks, Kendall Jenner. Everyone gawped at me while Charlotte furiously signaled me to stop. Everyone here is so boring! Ugh, all right, I'll stop then. My first day was then followed by tedious meetings and schedules. Everyone was talking gibberish and making me sign a bunch of papers. But every cloud has a silver lining, and for a foodie like me, that's dinner meetings. These people really know how to enjoy life, don't they? But before I could even have my first bite, they all started asking me about proposal this and project that. Fortunately, Matthew was there to save the day. Honestly, he seems pretty good at his job, and he's quite attractive when focused. Oh yeah, work. I gotta contribute my own talents at work too. So, the next day, I put the sign on my door, then sat back and watched my favorite fashion show. Ooh, look at those dazzling dresses. One day, I'd be walking the runway in a gown like that, not sitting here surrounded by confusing numbers and papers. Later, when I opened the door, an endless line of people was already waiting for me. Jeez, can't this company with all these brilliant brains function without me? Right then, Charlotte came dragging me away. What happened? Oh gosh, I didn't know that my computer was connected to the meeting room's projector, so everyone had been watching Project Runaway with me. Matthew was in the conference room too. Why didn't he fix it? 
Okay, everyone. We should thank our cute boss for giving us a lot of ideas for our problems. He finished the meeting and let them out, but Charlotte was still standing there fuming at me. Cute? There is nothing cute about it. Don't get any wrong ideas that he likes you. Wait for me, Maddie. What is with that attitude? Oh, right. I've seen the gooey-eyed look she gives Matthew. Does she have feelings for him? Before I could pry further, I was sent to Millen for another stupid meeting. Feeling bored, I watched a fashion show to kill time when someone startled me from my side. I personally think this collection is overrated. Oh, sorry if I scared you. I'm Brian. He then gave me his business card and, wow, he's the CEO of a modeling firm in France. Are you coming to the fashion week too? I wish. I actually came for work. <sighs> oh, what a pity. There's a modeling contest this week. I can tell a true beauty like you is destined for the crown. I missed so many chances to be on the runway. If I make it this time, maybe mom and dad will see how serious I am about modeling. This is too amazing of an offer to refuse. Brian, I'm coming with you. At the show, I made sure my phone was off so I could truly immerse myself in all the glamour of the newest fall collection. Brian then kept his word and took me to the audition. I was super nervous at first, but unexpectedly... Everyone else looked so amateur. Meanwhile, I strutted like a pro, confident that this time I would get an offer. But for now, reality was calling. <sighs> as soon as I turned on my phone, a zillion missed calls from Dad and Matthew popped up. This screamed trouble, so I quickly got Brian's contacts and returned home. There, Charlotte went all banshee shrieking mode on me accusing me of being irresponsible and selfish for skipping the important meeting. Dad, if you don't do something about this, Donna will destroy the company you've worked so hard to build. That's right. But instead of yelling at her, you should have been there to help out. I'm so disappointed in you, Charlotte. Oh God, Charlotte's face turned pale immediately. Dad should be scolding me, not her. Feeling a little bad for Charlotte, the next day I went to talk to her, but it sounded like she was arguing with someone inside. I walked in to see Matthew sitting there with loads of pictures of Brian and me. We're still, in Charlotte's words, it looked like we were dating. A few photos can't change the fact that we're getting engaged. He then grabbed my hand and pulled me outside, leaving a stunned Charlotte behind. How are you so sure that I'm not seeing someone else? It's just a feeling. Or maybe it's just my hope, because I... What did he mean by hope? And holy shrimp, why is my heart beating so crazy? What a day. I thought it was finally over when Dad slammed the pictures of me and Brian down in front of me. He was so mad at me, he decided our engagement would be tomorrow instead of a month, as planned. But I haven't mentally prepared for this. So here I am, at my engagement ceremony, waiting for my fiancé to arrive. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Actually, Brian called me last minute to tell me the best news ever. A fashion brand had chosen me as their ambassador. I needed to fly over for some paperwork. Thanks to him, I successfully escaped the engagement and flew to Milan to meet up with him. Finally, I got to pursue my long-repressed dream in my favorite city and not pay heed to my dad's ridiculous orders. Yay! As I woke up the next morning, I eagerly reached for my phone to call Brian, but... Huh? Where was it? I looked at the nightstand, but my passport, my wallet, and all of my stuff had disappeared! I dashed to the reception asking for Brian's room, but they all shook their heads saying there was no one by that name staying there. Frantic, I used their computer and checked the website for his phone number, but it kept saying error. Then I look up any information about the contest, but found zilch. How could he do this to me? I trusted him. Now I'm in a foreign country, all alone, and with no money. What am I going to do? I can't just call Dad to come get me. And neither can I call Charlotte. There's only one person I could contact right now. So I called Matthew, and he flew over immediately. We were walking along the Navili Canal to get some dinner before heading back. I thought he would be furious right now because I ran away from our engagement, but he was just quiet the whole time. So, is it okay for you to suddenly come here? I mean, work and stuff, you know? It's alright. You come first. Everything else comes after. That's sweet of him, but I needed to make sure he didn't get the wrong message. I called for your help, but that doesn't mean I want to get engaged. I'm... I'm not ready to come in. At first, I wanted this marriage to happen, but now I'm not so sure anymore. Oh my. Did me running away from the engagement upset him that much? As we stepped through the door, I saw Mom, Dad, and Charlotte waiting for us. Charlotte instantly bombarded me with her dolphin frequency yelling. 
Seeing how much they worried about me, how irresponsible and terrible I was. You should have won an Oscar for your acting, Charlotte. Unfortunately, your partner played you this time. Acting? And what partner? Turns out Charlotte was the one behind all of this. She hired Brian from the beginning to make me look bad in my parents' eyes. She also made sure my engagement with Matthew didn't go as planned. Everything played out just as she'd wanted, but she didn't think Brian's greed would get the best of him. He called Matthew, saying he was holding me for ransom. And during the call, the idiot fraud accidentally brought up Charlotte. We were all too shook to even speak, when Charlotte burst out crying. You're right! It was me all along! She's never done anything useful, yet got everything meant for me! Mom! Dad! If you needed someone to take care of the company and marry Maddie, why her? Why not me? You haven't told them anything this whole time? I was still processing everything when my dad sighed and said, I was going to tell you both when the time felt right, but seeing you pitting against each other like this hurts me so much. Actually, Donna, we're not your biological parents. Turns out, Dad was my parents' private lawyer and the company belonged to my real parents, not to Dad. But then, my parents got into a terrible accident, and during their last minutes, they gave the company, and me, over to him. They asked Dad to raise me properly and arrange for me to marry Matthew as a part of their deal with Matthew's parents. Growing up and seeing me so passionate about modeling, Dad was going to let Charlotte run the company and let me live my life how I wanted to. But then Matthew and his family showed up and insisted we get engaged according to the deal. Dad had no choice but to respect them and carry out my parents' will. So, my current beloved mom and dad are not my actual family? We're still. My biological parents had both passed away. Donna, we hope you understand. Though we're not related, we've always loved you as our daughter. This is very hard for us, too. I looked at mom and dad, the ones who had always loved and cared for me. Mom, dad, just like you two. I'm sure my parents would want me to do what makes me happy. Though, I am the lawful heiress of the company. I can only do harm to it. So, I hope you understand, and let Charlotte take over it. She's a better suit than me. That's right. You cannot force someone into doing something they don't like. Neither can you force someone into love. Woohoo! No more boring office job. Instead, I've put all my energy into elite model look. And here I am today. You've got this, Donna. I confidently strutted down the runway with Mom, Dad, and Charlotte cheering from the audience. And when I finished my part, I joined my family and nervously waited for the MC to announce the chosen ones. Samantha Friske, Amelia Davis, and Donna Rossi! Yes! I've made it! I've been waiting for this day for so long! Suddenly, I spotted Matthew coming towards us. Congratulations, Donna. I knew you'd get it. Thank you for coming. I know love cannot be forced, nor should I rush it, but... Whenever you're ready. Donna, will you go out with me? How about... now? Oh, it's been more than a year, and this place is still exactly the same. I thought to myself. Suddenly, I noticed a man walking in front of me. He looked so familiar. Could it be... him? Alex! I rushed after him and grabbed his arm. He's so gonna catch these hands. But as he turned around, oops, I realized it wasn't Alex, but a total stranger. Martin Henderson? I was so embarrassed that I couldn't even look him in the eyes. Sorry, I murmured as I ran towards the elevator. This must be fate. We meet again. I was standing outside the building when I heard a voice. I turned around and there he was, the guy I met this morning. Hi, I'm Martin, he said, and reached out to shake my hand. Before I could react, I heard someone calling me. It was Tom, my best friend from Vietnam. I had a lunch date with him, but I'd almost forgotten. Oh, I'm Lindsay. Oh, great seeing you. Then I quickly said bye to Martin and rushed over to Tom. Lindsay, how's your new job going, and who is that guy back there? I felt so sad as he asked me this. Um, I don't actually know him. He just looks so much like someone from my past. Tom rolled his eyes. Someone from your past? Oh, come on. Don't tell me it was that pathetic boyfriend of yours who abandoned you in Vietnam. 
Well, what could I say? Despite what Alex did to me after all this time, I still couldn't get him out of my head. Tom could clearly sense that as he said, Honestly, Lindsay, you need to get over him. He was a total jerk. Suddenly, all of the memories of our time together came flooding back. A year ago, Alex and I had gone on an adventure to Vietnam together. We'd been planning it for ages, and it would be a long one, since we wanted to explore the country as much as possible. At first, everything was going to plan, but then one morning, a stupid argument led us to a big fight that got Alex so angry that he up and left. I thought he just needed to blow off some steam and then he'd be back, so I just carried on with the trip on my own in the meantime. But days quickly passed, and there was no sign of him. And ever since then, I haven't seen or heard from him. It's like he just disappeared into thin air. Anyway, I had to pay for everything on the trip by myself, including stuff that we reserved for two. So I quickly ran low on cash. And what's left in my bank account couldn't afford me a trip back home either. So I asked my mom if I could borrow some. And that's when she told me what had happened. My family was in huge trouble due to some food scandal at their restaurant. The case was really serious, and they'd gone totally bankrupt. So my mom just told me to stay put in Vietnam for a bit, until things had calmed down. Well, that's how I ended up being stuck in Vietnam for a whole year, and the rest is history. I turned to Tom and smiled. He'd been so good to me. Tom, thank you for helping me find a job back then. You're a lifesaver. Tom grinned and said, No, I should thank you. Actually, you're the reason why I strive to be here in the U.S. getting my master's degree. And you know what? Um, I still want to be the one by your side. Always. Jeez, it was a bit awkward. I didn't know what to do but force a polite smile. Yeah, I could tell he had some sort of feelings for me but I only considered him as a best friend. And look, at the moment, I had enough on my plate already. So here I am now, at the company that used to belong to my family to help my parents solve this scandal with their restaurant. I know the claims aren't true, and I'm determined to help them figure it out so they can get their business back. Until then, I have to deal with working under the new CEO, Mr. Garcia. Well, well, hello. Precious princess of the steward family. Oh, Mr. Garcia, it's been a long time not seeing those greedy eyes. What an honor for us to have the daughter of the former CEO as an employee. <laughs> I forgot to mention, but guess what? That rude man just happens to be Alex's uncle. So yeah, that's been fun. And there's something I just can't get out of my head. Alex's disappearance happened at the exact same time as my family's business collapsed. Coincidence or... I get to the bottom of it, though. Ever since then, I put a lot of effort into my work, hoping to find some clues. But Mr. Garcia just never fails to give me endless trouble. Luckily, Martin was by my side. Yep, that's right. That guy I'd bumped into on my first day of work. He'd been so supportive even bringing me dinner when I work overtime. I mean, how sweet. And the more time I spent with him, the happier I became. There was just something so familiar about him. Tom, however, wasn't happy about this. He'd applied to be an intern at our company, but he worked in the files control department. Tom was so rude to Martin every time they bumped into each other, and it made me feel so uncomfortable. One time, Martin had offered me a lift home, and Tom forced me to go with him instead, saying it would be safer. He was being so immature. But I didn't have time to focus on that, because there were bigger things at stake. One day, I found out there was a clue that could lead me to the truth, a top-secret document that was kept in the files control department. It contained all the business activities from before my family went bankrupt, and also the deals of how Mr. Garcia went about taking over the company. I needed to get to this document. However, there was just one problem. The only person who could access the computer where this document was stored 
were members of Alex's family. Big problem, right? Anyway, one night, Tom and I were out to dinner, and he was acting really weird. Suddenly, he said, Lindsay, you should stay away from Martin. There's something shady about him. This annoyed me. Tom, I don't get it. What's your problem with him? Please listen to me first. Then, he told me what he'd seen. One night, he'd gone back to work as he'd forgotten his phone, and he happened to see Martin trying to access top-secret documents. Request access, Martin had said. Kindly provide the access code. The server responded. Alexi Joseph Garcia, he said confidently. And then the iris scanner started working. Welcome, Mr. Garcia. Access granted. Tom had watched all of this from behind the door quietly, and with just a few clicks, Martin had successfully accessed all the top-secret files without a problem. Then he'd quickly left through the back entrance. I couldn't believe it! If it was only the Garcia family who had access, how had Martin done this? And how did he know Alex's full name? Well, I needed to pay more attention to this guy. At least he'd gotten the file anyway. That was good enough for me. I had to get it from him. A few days later, I pretended my laptop was broken and asked if I could borrow his to send a few emails. I quickly checked his files, but couldn't find anything. Where could he be keeping them? Then one day, I saw him slip a USB drive into his bag. Well, that's suspicious. Maybe that was what I needed. That afternoon, I asked him out for coffee, and then I decided to drop my phone so that I could find a way to reach into his bag and get the USB. Unfortunately, it didn't go to plan. I ended up knocking over my coffee cup, and it went all over Martin's sleeve. He always wore long sleeves, even on roasting hot days, but of course, the coffee had gone everywhere, so he quickly pulled up his sleeve. And that's when I saw it a scar running up his arm. I gasped. How did you get this scar? It looks exactly like my ex's. Alex had the same scar. Before I could say anything more, Martin snapped and said, What scar? Then he quickly pulled his sleeve down. Don't lie to me, Martin. I saw it. And I know there's something sketchy about you. Why did you access the server room at 10 p.m.? And how did you know Alex's full name? Tell me who you are. I knew there was something familiar about you. Just tell me the truth. Yes, it's me. Alex. He spoke hesitantly, then asked me to calm down, but I couldn't stand it. My heart stopped for a few beats. How could you do this? I screamed. Did you and your uncle plan this all along? Lindsay, let me explain. I got plastic surgery, but it's not what you think. I'm on your side. I want to overthrow my uncle and get the company back for your family. Please believe me. Then Martin, or should I say Alex, told me the whole story. It turns out Mr. Garcia planned the whole thing to sabotage my family's business and he took advantage of Alex to help do this. He, Mr. Garcia, even made up a story that there had been a feud between our two families, and that my dad had tried to bankrupt Alex's family, which pushed his parents to the brink of desperation. Of course, this made Alex angry, as he was protective of his family, and it nurtured in him a strong craving for revenge. But after helping his uncle take over my family's business, he discovered not only that Mr. Garcia wasn't his uncle, but that he, Alex, was also an orphan. Apparently, Mr. Garcia didn't have any biological relation to Alex, nor did he know anything about Alex's late parents. That spiteful man just manipulated people in any way to his advantage. Alex was disgusted that he'd been used and lied to like this, so he set out to get revenge on his so-called uncle by changing his identity and bringing everything to light to give justice to my family. He then showed me everything he got from the secret files. All the dirty tricks Mr. Garcia had used to sabotage and take over the company. 
He'd even been leading the company down a dark path through lots of illegal antics. But then Alex told me that before becoming Martin, he'd bought a number of shares. And now he would transfer them to me, so I could take back my family's company. I couldn't believe it. I immediately showed all the evidence to the board of directors. And right away, everything was resolved. Finally, Mr. Garcia was not only kicked out of the company, but he was also sent to prison for his unethical business practices. And it was all thanks to Alex. The person I'd held a grudge against the most had been the one to help me get back all that was lost. As for Alex and I, well, it's clear we still have feelings for each other. But after everything we've been through, I think it's best if we give it some time before we jump back into a relationship. Plus, Tom admitted he likes me, which, of course, was obvious, but I don't want to upset him. Only time will tell if Alex and I are meant to be. Blue sky, white clouds, golden sand? Such a perfect day for sunbathing on this luxury Hawaiian beach, while being served by Kirby, my archenemy. That brat used to tease me all the time about my old clothes and messy hair. Little did she know, I was secretly a millionaire. Earth to chlorine. Castle building all day won't fill your stomach. Finish your shift and go home. Well, Mary, who doesn't want to get rich? Sadly, some of us can only dream about it. If you want to be Cinderella, then go find yourself a prince. Just not Danny. He's just as poor as us. Do not underestimate my Danny. My precious heart fell for him for a reason. It's just that he doesn't seem to realize that we're destined for each other yet. But Mary was right. My dinner won't cook itself. Let's see what we can afford for tonight. My dad left us when I was four, and since then, mom worked her socks off to provide for us. So it was down to me to also work to save up for my law school dream. All of a sudden, groceries started raining down on me. Bottles tumbled off the shelves and broke into pieces right by my feet. Ah, is it an earthquake? I stooped down and prayed until it stopped. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but geez, it sure left a freaking mess. Warren, the store owner, looked distraught. This place was all he had, so I helped him clean up and place anything undamaged back on the shelves. Before you leave, please take this as a token of my gratitude. I hope it brings you luck. A lottery ticket? I don't know how this game works. I'll show you. It's simple. Each ticket has a unique set of numbers. Just check the results on TV tonight and see if they match. Let me see. Your numbers are 15, 26, 14, 48, 0, 7, 23. Hey, those are the lucky numbers that have been on my mind all day. I want that ticket. Kirby, stop poking your nose in my business, will you? Sorry, miss. That's the last ticket today, and I already gave it to Clarine. Then I'll buy it. Here's your two bucks. Give it to me. You wish. I didn't really care about this ticket, but there's no way I was going to let her get what she wanted. And surely, she wouldn't leave me alone. How about ten bucks? That's a fortune to the likes of you. No thanks. I'd rather win millions instead and make you my maid. Look, you'll never get anything from me, be it this ticket or Danny. Just give up. Fine! I may skip this stupid ticket, but Danny, never! Why are we always bickering, you ask? Well, we're both competing for the heart of Danny. Tennis extraordinaire and brooding Adonis. Actually, I thought I had more advantage as he worked part-time at the same restaurant. But nope, Danny was such a cold fish. I tried again and again, but every single time, he just gave me a soulless thank you and that's it. If only I could build him his own tennis courts, perhaps he'd change his attitude. But that's impossible for a poor girl like me, unless I somehow hit the jackpot. The lucky numbers today are 48, 07, 15. Should I add winning the lottery to my daydream list? <laughs> 26, 14. Is it just me or do those numbers sound familiar? No way, it can't be. And the mega ball is 23. Now if your ticket has all six numbers, you win over 20 million dollars. Play on. Me. I think I just become a millionaire. God had answered my prayers. What? Kirby's here too? The ticket must have hit it for real. I rush there to rummage through the trash. And ah, here it is. It's mine. As if. Let's go ask Warren who this ticket belongs to then. Brilliant. And then give him a third of the prize? Do you really expect him not to ask for a share? 
Right. Okay, let it go and I'll give you a 30% share. Great ratio, but 30% is a perfect fit for you. I'll take 70%. And Danny. Oh, that's how you want to play. Fine then. How about whoever wins Danny's heart gets 70%? Deal. So we agreed to hide the lottery ticket in a trunk with two locks. Each of us kept one key to it. Then we buried it in a bush at school. Looks like the secret race between us starts now. Kirby wasted no time and brought Danny the showiest lunches ever. But he kept up his cold exterior and barely acknowledged her. Seems like I need a more delicate approach. So I told Mary to arrange a team building game among the restaurant staff, in which we all had to answer the same questions to understand one another better. Oh look! He liked watching Star Trek, listening to Sam Smith, and reading Harry Potter like me! Oh Danny boy, I told you we were destined to be a pair! Next question, what is the key to maintaining a long-term relationship? There's our very first answer. Feelings? Come on, Danny, be realistic. What uses do feelings have if you can even afford to go on a date? Poor people can also be happy in love, but I don't think pragmatic people like you can. No, no, he misunderstood what I meant. After that, he ignored me completely. Worse still, Kooky Kirby never left him alone. She even brought the whole cheerleading team to do this ridiculous routine while he was playing. Who cheers on a tennis court? She was going big, so I needed to step up my game. It's time to bust out my college savings. I spent the whole day at the mall buying him gifts and giving myself a makeover. This is the first time in my life I've spent my hard-earned money without considering the price. It feels so good, but at the same time, kind of bad. But I could make it up with the lottery money once I got Danny's heart. Look, I saw this watch and I immediately thought of you. I even met a professional tennis player at the mall. Can you believe it? And they told me this racket is the best. What do you think? You're crazy. This costs thousands. Why are you doing this? Um, that's not the reaction I was expecting. But I like you, Danny. I've not been brave enough to tell you this because I had nothing. But soon, my life would change and I can give you everything. I don't need those things. You're so wasteful and superficial. You really think money can buy anything, including feelings? Why was he so mad at me? I thought he must have noticed that I'd worked really hard for all this and even made myself look prettier for him. Okay, he might not like my gifts, but is it so bad that I want to be a little generous to myself now that I have some money? Things got even worse when later I arrived at work to see Kirby booking out the entire restaurant to let her Danny take a rest and enjoy dinner with her. Fine, you win Kirby, I give up. <sighs> Nothing, basically nothing went the way I wanted. My luck, my money, my man. Now I'm fine with just the 30% God gave me. I'm done chasing anyone. Only my stray friends understand me. Muffin, Brownie, Oreo. Wait, where's Cupcake? Looking for him? Let him go. This wasteful superficial girl needs to make sure he's not starving. So you're the one who feeds them every day? Why do you care? Go back to your date with Kirby. I'm just a materialist who thinks money solves everything. I'm sorry for how I acted earlier. It's just that, at home, I'm surrounded by people who are all about money. So I hate that way of life. Why aren't you talking like you come from money or something? Yeah, kinda. My parents are the presidents of Sunland Corp. What? The biggest furniture corporation in the city? Unbelievable! So why are you working part-time at a restaurant? I want to earn my own money. An independent life suits me much better. You're so silly. Why struggle if you don't have to? If I were you, my life would be so different. I'd make sure that my mom didn't need to work all the time to make ends meet. I could even go to any expensive law school I want and care for all the stray cats and dogs I find. Surprisingly, this time, Danny didn't look at me with jaded eyes like before. Instead, he just listened patiently and gave me the sweetest smile ever. But not love. That's one thing money can't buy. H how about Kirby? Did any of her grand gestures impress you? <laughs> I prefer the cats. Our talk has confirmed that there's still a chance for me. Kirby's only advantage over me is money, but Danny doesn't care about that anyway. Is that the new student? Seems like Danny just found a worthy opponent. He's Finn. Look how he smiles whenever his opponent catches up a point. Wait, did you just call Danny someone's opponent? Someone has a new crush. Who? who? Don't talk nonsense. Right then, a ball zoomed toward us. And holy moly, Finn caught it just mere inches from Kirby's face. Are you okay? She's fine. Her face always turns red. Nothing to do with a ball. Kirby was so embarrassed that she ran off. <laughs>
It seems our race took a turn. But then, shockingly, Finn turned to me and asked for my number? Huh? Does my charm glow this much? Everyone knew I liked Danny, but he's such a riddle. Hmm, maybe I could use Finn as my last card to make Danny jealous and bait Kirby to give up on our deal. What a genius I am! Then, for the next few days, whenever Danny was around, I flirted with Finn and made sure Kirby saw us. One day, I made an excuse to borrow Finn's phone, then I secretly used it to send Danny a message to stir up his jealousy. If you don't like Clarine, then let me play with this innocent girl for a bit. And Kirby also needs a kick to admit her feelings as well, right? Actually, I like you. Looking into your eyes, I know you also have feelings for me, so... And finally, I set a date for them at the tennis court tonight at 8. If Danny doesn't want me to get hurt and Kirby doesn't want to miss her true love, they'll show up. Then I covered up my tracks, blocked both our numbers, and returned his phone. Thank you so much. Are you free tonight? Come to the tennis court. I have something important to tell you. Oh god, Finn looks like he just won the Wimbledon. That night, Finn got there early and was really excited. Let's see who will raise the curtain. Ah, it's Kirby. Oh Finn, you had me at hello. But admitting my feelings means I lose the deal with Clarine, so... What do you mean? What deal? No, no, don't get me wrong. Actually, we won the lottery and made a deal to share it. Anyways, silly me. Money can compare to you. Lottery? You two share it? Why did she even mention the money? Right when it's getting messy, Danny turned up. Bastard, now you're two-timing? Danny, why are you here? He's just playing with you. This jerk is seeing both you and Kirby. Don't let him fool you. I think Finn is a nice guy. Plus, I've told you how I felt, but you've never seemed to like me back. So Finn, we... Finn told me he liked me. Clarine, I like you. More than you know. Can't you see? I've given a lot of... Hints. I always make excuses to go home with you. I told you that feelings are the most important thing to me. As in my feelings for you. Really? Idiot. How am I supposed to pick up those hints? So this daydreamer wasn't just imagining things? Turns out my plan actually did succeed. Kirby, it's true. I do like you. But I thought you were out of my league, so I just wanted to ask Clarine for help. Oh, how nice. Kirby, with a huge grin, then admitted I won. Then she dragged Finn away. Hmm, I guess my biggest win is successfully pairing up two couples. The next morning, Kirby and I opened the trunk to get the ticket. When to our utter shock, Finn swooped in and snatched it away. While we were still processing what was going on, he ran off with our millions. But then, a shadow sent him tumbling to the ground. Danny? I saw him following you two and knew he was up to something shady. Then, Finn confessed that he transferred schools and approached me for the lottery ticket following his dad's order, who's none other than... Warren! He knew it was a jackpot-winning ticket, so he set up a plan to steal it from me. I'm so sorry. My dad's a gambling addict, which left him heavily in debt, and only this ticket could save him. Oh, Finn. I believe he's not a bad person. This ticket was originally from Warren anyway, so we both agreed to give him a share to pay off his debt. Finn was moved and handed the ticket back to us. On learning this, Warren thanked us and offered to drive us to Tallahassee to claim our prize. He even carefully got me to double-check that my ticket was in my purse. But halfway there, the car suddenly broke down, so the four of us got out and gave it a push. But as we started pushing, Warren suddenly sped away, leaving all of us standing there in shock. Where's your purse, Clarine? I left it in the car. That greedy snake Warren did this on purpose to run away with a ticket. Now what to do? Walk back home or walk to Tallahassee? Calm down. Danny already has a backup plan. This is the real ticket. Enjoy the view for now. A taxi is coming to pick us up. Actually, the moment Warren offered to drive us all the way to Tallahassee, I sent something sketchy. So I swapped the tickets. <sighs> My dad's gone too far this time. He needs to stop gambling and work hard to pay off his debts instead. Finally, we got the cash prize. However, the four of us decided not to divide it anymore. Instead, we're building a shelter for stray animals together. Surprisingly, our project soon reached many philanthropists and now our fund has been expanded across the US. Since then, Kirby is no longer obnoxious. Now she even wants to become a veterinarian. And me? I will continue to work my way into the law school of my dreams. My hard work has really paid off because they just sent me an acceptance letter. I might not be rich, but in all honesty, it doesn't matter, as I couldn't be happier.
Hi, I'm Celine, and I've called the St. Augustine Orphanage home since I was six, but I'm not actually an orphan. You see, my parents are special agents with secret identities. Sweetie, if one day someone suspicious asks you about your parents, run for your life. I was used to these fleeting, ghost-like visits from my parents. They often took turns sneaking in and out at night, spending the little time they had with me, and always came together for my birthday. And even though I didn't see them much, they taught me some awesome skills. By the age of 12, I was fluent in five languages, could play a variety of instruments, and do a butterfly kick on anyone who needed it. Despite living a secret life and not seeing my parents as much as I wanted, I still felt lucky that I had them both in my life. It's my 17th birthday, a day I should be super excited about. You see, my parents always visit me together on my birthday, but I've been waiting here for ages and there's no sign of them. This was the first year this had happened. I didn't like it one bit. Something was definitely up. The next day in church, we were singing hymns when I spotted this strange man in the crowd staring at me. My instinct were telling me something was up, so I eavesdropped on him, talking to a nun. That girl with blonde hair. How exactly did her parents pass away? He asked about my parents. That meant my life was in real danger. I fled with all my survival skills right away. What really happened to my parents? Have their identities been revealed? I didn't dare to think about it. So I made sure no one was following me before going to the subway and looking for a baggage locker. This was where I needed to come in a run for my life situation. I waited until nobody was around before I opened it with my key. Inside was some money, a dossier documenting a girl's life from childhood to old age, and a letter. Our darling Celine, we're very sorry that you didn't have the normal childhood you deserved. Please don't ever doubt that we cherish and love you with all of our hearts. If you're reading this, it means our identities have been compromised. We've included the documents for your new identity. Stay strong. We will reunite soon. You're a loving mom and dad. XO. If my parents could arrange all this for me, I believe that they could handle anything and come back to me soon. So here I am, under my new identity, Diane. Australia, here I come. My parents left me just enough money to start a new life here, pay for rent, and tuition fees. How perfectly ordinary. Diane's parents were researchers way in the Arctic. She's from a basic family and attended normal public schools, then worked as an office accountant, did not marry, or have children. Everything was boringly safe. The thing is, if I was going to be someone else, then I should at least be someone fun. So I didn't start school. Instead, I created and adopted the identity of 20-year-old Harper and started my first money-making idea, Marriage on Demand. With all I'd learned from my parents, I could make a whole lot of money and at the same time experience how a normal family would look like. Perfect! First, I became a Harvard doctor graduate so this privileged guy's parents would give him his inheritance. Next, a posh aristocrat who saved my client from a dreadful arranged marriage. And then, a sweet-natured girl who helped my client intimidate their seriously mean friends. As soon as my clients achieved their goals, the contract ended and we went our separate ways. Before I knew it, through my Harper alias, I'd married nine guys in just eight months and become eye-wateringly rich. But as it turned out, the cases I took were all abnormal families. This tenth contract would be my final case. Then I'd say goodbye to Harper and attend college as Diane before I lost all faith in ever getting the family of my dreams. But while driving to my rendezvous, I swear that car was following me. It could be my parents or someone dangerous. Only one way to find out. Now I just had to wait. If they were dangerous, I'd drive straight off this cliff, then swim to safety. Then I saw this gormless, grinning guy peer through my window. He held up a temporary girlfriend contract. Hey, I just want to talk. Could he be my 10th client? Either way, he seemed harmless, so I stepped out of the car. I'm Carlton from the courthouse. You've sure been busy, so I've been assigned to investigate you. As far as I'm aware, it's not illegal to marry multiple times, is it? No, only if they're real and not marriage contracts. Carlton, I only have one client left and I'm not marrying him. I'm his temporary girlfriend, which I believe is legal. So, is there any chance you could turn a blind eye this one last time? Legal or not, I strongly advise you to quit this job and do something more morally upright. Just then, a black car pulled over and a man walked straight towards us. Oh no, had they found me? I'm sorry for getting you into trouble. I turned around, ready to jump, but Carlton suddenly held my hand back. No need for that. My boss won't eat you alive. Besides, I haven't told anyone about the contracts yet. Oh, so this man's his boss from the court? Turns out he and his wife happened to see Carlton on their way to the airport and just came to say hi. Hey Carl, it doesn't say much if this girl would rather jump into the sea than date you. 
He looked really awkward and I felt bad for the guy. Without thinking it through, I clung onto his arm and gave him my best adoring look. Actually, we're deeply in love. I'm an adrenaline junkie, but you know Carl, he's just so strict about things like this. You're right, Carl is rather stiff. If you loosened up a bit, you may have been promoted by now. After they left, I explained to Carlton that's what my job is, helping nice guys out of unnecessary trouble. Nothing immoral about it. I was about to leave when he suddenly stopped me. I could see his attitude changed. Please, make a contract with me. I know you could help me improve my communication skills and get me promoted. You can see how desperate I am right now. I wasn't sure. I mean, number 10 was meant to be my last client, but just look at that clueless face. Fine, but in return, you must be an attentive boyfriend, and I want to have dinner with you and your family every evening. Carl looked a bit confused, but he agreed to my demands. Ugh, this was probably my last chance to experience a family life. I have a strict don't be wife two people at the same time rule, so I'm meeting my other client to gently turn him down. Celine, is that you? S Celine, he knew my name? OMG, that's Matten, the genius pianist from the orphanage. Oh no, this was terrible. He could blow my cover. I, um, I was adopted and go by Harper now. My adoptive parents turned out to be a letdown. I had to fake my identity so I could work on my own. I understand. It's so hard for orphans like us to survive. Yes, it sure is. Look, Matten, things got pretty difficult for me, so I had to take another job in a hurry. I can't do two jobs at once. I'm sorry I have to cancel our contract. Yeah, about that. I already publicly announced I have a girlfriend just a second ago. Pianist prodigy Matten confirmed he's currently dating someone? Matten, I really can't do this. Just tell me who your client is. I can make a deal with him. I can't be with them both, so I called an emergency meeting for them to plead their cases. An article accused me of inappropriate behavior towards female artists. It's completely false, of course. I need a girlfriend to distract the public and make them see I'm not a jerk. I want this promotion. If you won't help me, I'll expose you publicly. Pfft, like that matters. I'll just take you back to the US. No, I can't go back there, and I don't want any attention from people either. This is what I'm gonna do, Carl. I'll be your girlfriend on weekdays and do anything I can to help you get promoted. In Matin, I'll be your girlfriend, well, pretend to be your girlfriend on the weekend. But my face has to stay out of the media, okay? Once this is done, then it's goodbye Harper and hello, trouble-free, simple Diane. All I have to do is play some music while Matten listens and lets the paparazzi snap photos. I've always admired the way you play music. It follows no rules, but that's what makes it so fearless and fun. His comment made me pine for my parents. They were the reason I played like that. They taught me in the dark, told me to flow with the rhythms without any rules. I miss them so much. I must admit I'd always had a crush on you. When this is over, I want to protect you. I want to be your family. This was sweet, but he didn't know that I already had a family. I just needed to be patient, then eventually they'll be back. On weekdays, I joined Carlton for lunch at work and helped him talk to his co-workers and grumpy boss. Then in the evening, I went to his house and gave him tips on how to be more charismatic, make people trust and warm up to him. I also taught him how to walk without slouching and politely greet people. Hi, Mr. Chair, you look great today. Oh, Miss Lamp, are you okay? You shouldn't lose more weight. You're already gorgeous. Isn't that too much? I've never talked like this before. You're doing great. Carlton followed all my advice. He might be a bit clumsy, but in a cute, endearing way. Still, what I anticipated most was joining his family for dinner. I'd never experienced the cozy and warm atmosphere of a family dinner before. Who knew Carl was such a great cook? And so sweet. After only one week, Carl now had friends at work and his boss gave him extra responsibilities. Meanwhile, Matten's reputation also made a rebound thanks to articles like, he doesn't want to be around other girls because he's so passionately in love with this amazing muse. A frantic week quickly passed, which ended with Carlton's family celebrating his new position, all thanks to me. I was so moved I almost cried, but noticed Carlton seemed off. Maybe he was bummed out as he knew this was the end of our contract. After dinner, we went for a stroll around the garden. Then he blurted out, Who are you really? I was super surprised. Then he told me that one of his new jobs was to investigate a girl called Diane who entered the country, then vanished. I know you're Diane. I can recognize those eyes anywhere. Yes, I'm Diane, but I only faked my identity to earn money. I know you're lying again. It's fine, you've helped me, so I'll help you too. I faked some info to close the case. Thank you, Carl. This means a lot. I knew how important the laws were to him, but he still broke them. For me. I actually quit my job. 
What do you mean? What about your promotion? You've tried so hard for that. It's okay. I realized I didn't like it so much anyway. I felt terrible that he'd given up his job because of me. But he didn't need me anymore. Our contract had to end, right? Now it's time to end Matin's contract. Then I can go back to being Diane. However, I showed up at the villa to a swarm of reporters. Are you Matin's girlfriend? Please get out of the car. Are you the girl who dates him for dollars, not love? Please show yourself and verify the news. Looks like the news of Matin's girlfriend being a girl who only married for money had leaked. I sat there not knowing what to do. Then I saw Matin coming out of the villa hand in hand with some shiny haired girl. These rumors about my girlfriend are all lies. Amber is a wonderful, kind hearted soul and I couldn't be happier. Oh, I suppose that's pretty smart of him. Finding someone with a nice background was the only way to save his reputation for now. Goodbye, Matten. I wish you well. It seems he couldn't bring himself to ruin his career to protect me the way Carlton did. Now I was free to be Diane and attend this public school my parents wanted me to. Hmm, I was wondering when you'd show up. You're rather popular. A man with a scar has been asking about you. Someone with a scar was looking for Diane? The moment I realized someone was watching me behind the door, my instinct told me to run for my life. I rushed to the window and jumped down, just to catch Carlton peeping at me. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you, so I tracked down Diane. I didn't expect to find you here, but I like you a lot, and there was no time. They saw us together, so I pulled him away. You're driving like crazy, Diane. Who are they? Why are they chasing us? I don't know. All I know is that they're dangerous. He took his phone out to call 911, but I stopped him. No cops. I can't trust anyone but myself, Carl. I'm so sorry for dragging you into this mess. My parents often told me the best way to escape a chase is to jump into the water. However crazy it seems, please trust me. I took a sudden turn and plunged the car straight into the sea. In the water, I unfastened the seatbelt and turned to see Carl already got out of his. He pulled my hand and we swam through the window. The waves drifted us onto a beach, but I had no strength left to move an inch. They're gonna catch us. Celine, sweetie, please wake up. I rubbed my eyes and saw the golden sand, Carlton, and my mom and dad? Am I dead? M mom? No, sweetie, you're very much alive. Turns out the people chasing us were my parents. After 10 years on the job, they finally eliminated the criminal gang and retired. Dad ended up getting the scar, but it's all over now. We could finally be a normal family. You sure made it hard for us to track you down by using a different identity. We should have known our cunning daughter would have created a more challenging life. Like father, like daughter. Huh? You're not Diane? Carlton, my name's Celine. Mom, Dad, this is Carlton, my boyfriend. It was so cute seeing him blush. Then he quickly held his hand out and introduced himself to them. It's lovely to meet you both. I care greatly for your daughter and I always will, no matter how mischievous she is. Turns out it's pretty amazing just being Celine. I started school as myself and so far, so good. I'm living with my kind, talented, and normal parents. We're having the best time together. And I get to date this cute, caring chef. The best part is I can finally stop running for my life and just enjoy the people I love most. Hey everyone, I'm Ellie, and my genius inventions are set to make me the next Thomas Edison. If you want to see more of my one-of-a-kind inventions, please comment and don't forget to like and subscribe to Animated Story Show. My mom passed away when I was little, so since then, it's just been me, dad, and my older sister, Kara. Dad's an independent scientist. Growing up, he was always inventing something and let me help around. Naturally, I developed a passion for inventing from an early age. You're playing frisbee and you're hungry, but you don't have a plate to eat your food. Has this ever happened to you? No. I present to you the frisbee food plate. Okay, okay, no frisbee plate. How about these goggles that help you cut onions without tearing up? Or this cool food hat, perfect for all your TV snack needs. Okay, so maybe they weren't ready for my inventions back then, but at least Kara seemed to like them. Like this alarm clock that only goes off when the puzzle has been solved. She's a doctor, so it's important she gets up on time and keeps her mind alert. I want to do well too. It's my dream to be an inventor just like dad. So I studied hard and managed to get a scholarship into the most prestigious private school in the state. While I was getting used to my new school, dad was working hard to make sure I got everything I needed. Everyone loved his inventions, including the Bancrofts. 
one of the wealthiest families in town. They hired him to design a robot chef system. But due to a system error, it short-circuited and set their mansion on fire. Luckily, no one was hurt, but Dad's reputation was at stake. He had to pay for the damages, which meant we had to sell our home. Still, we didn't have enough money. Just then, a woman, Mrs. Harding, came to see Dad and told him that she'd settle everything on one condition. He had to live in the mansion and work exclusively for her. Dad didn't have much choice, so he agreed and asked for me to tag along too. As for Kara, she received a high-paying job offer to provide round-the-clock care for a coma patient, so she moved into the hospital. So Dad and I started our new venture, only mansion life didn't go so well. As soon as we stepped through the huge doors, Dad was bundled off into the basement to work. And me? I became Mrs. Harding's own personal servant. This was so not cool. So I decided to get sweet revenge. I tinkered with Mrs. Harding's high heels so I could control them with a remote. Only I was busted by Ariana, Mrs. Harding's daughter. What are you up to? I, I, I'm just... Oh, I see. Hmm, clever. Let me help you. What in the cinnamon toast? So we watched Mrs. Harding put the heels on, wobbled about, and tumbled over. Mission completed. Nice one, Ellie. That's the funniest thing I've seen all year. So what's up with you and Mrs. Harding? Mom's always so strict on me, but Dad is the opposite. Only he's traveling, so Mom's running the Milo Corporation for the time being, and now she's turned into even more of a tyrant. From then on, Ariana and I became friends and spent our free time pulling funny pranks on Mrs. Harding together. We rearranged her laptop keyboard, messed with her water flosser, and tampered with her bedroom light. I wanted to help Dad with the finances, so at school, I opened up a design-on-demand inventing service for some extra money. Queen, the school Queen Bee noticed and made an order with me. High heels that convert to flats will make partying easier. Put me down for a pair in size 7 and make sure they're hot pink. I finished the order, then excitedly gave them to Queen. Only she fell on her butt. You did it on purpose, didn't you? Ugh, I'll make your life a misery. I made them based exactly on your order. Hey, you got what you ordered, so leave her alone. <laughs> Turns out this is Owen, who's also here on a scholarship. Owen's a science guy too, so we clicked instantly. One night, I was serving dinner when I overheard Ariana ask her mom why her dad wasn't back home yet. Ariana, he has flown to India for a spiritual retreat. Huh? That doesn't sound like something dad would do. Yes, well, the spiritual retreat is helpful in running the company. He'll be back soon. Now eat your greens. Ariana seemed very confused still. I knew her pain, as I missed my dad too. Feeling down, I went to see Kara to talk to her about it. But Kara appeared with two giant bodyguards. What's with the walking mountains? My patient is very important, so they're here to ensure information security. It's no big deal, sis. Just pretend they're not there. I felt bad that Kara had to work under such extremes for our family, so I was determined to sell more of my inventions. Everyone knows your inventions suck. Quit clogging up the hallway already. We could come up with better inventions. See, straight A's here. Those mean girls who were always ranking last in class now became top students? Pfft. How you achieve those grades doesn't count. Yeah, they definitely didn't earn those A's themselves. And you? That desperate for money, huh? Well, it's a long story. So I told him about my family's misfortune and how lucky I was to have Ariana as a friend, despite her being the daughter of the Myla Corporation owner. She seems cool. Why don't we invite her to the arcade with us? So the three of us went there and Owen quickly acquainted himself with Ariana. It was good they were getting on, but hello, I was still here. When Ariana went to the restroom, I asked Owen, so you like her then? Why? You're not jealous, are you? J jealous No way. Then Owen suddenly turned serious and told me actually, he's been researching AI. Recently, there were some AI unethical products on the market. Some even took advantage of the face recognition feature to secretly withdraw money from millionaires' bank accounts or stock them. You know those girls bragged about getting straight A's? Well, they used a cheating device that I suspect came from the Myla Corporation. No way! My dad works for Myla. He wouldn't be behind this. He couldn't. 
I don't know, Ellie. All I know is companies that use science and tech irresponsibly are a big bugbear of mine, and I had no intention of flirting with Ariana. I only approached her to do some more digging, and maybe we could sneak into the basement to talk to your dad about it. It's impossible. It's like Fort Knox. There's a security guard there 24-7. Owen assured me that between us, we'd figure out a way. I was pondering how best to sneak in to see Dad when Ariana pulled me into her room. Owen is cute, isn't he? Will you help matchmake us? Huh? That was quick. If Ariana knew Owen only hung around with her to find out about Myla Corporation, she'd be really hurt. But she was relentless, so in the end, I reluctantly agreed. I set up a date for them, but seeing them together sucked, so I decided to tag along. But anyway, the date turned out helpful. Not sure what sweet talk Owen had been saying to Ariana, but she agreed to help me and Owen sneak into the basement. The next day, Ariana helped distract the basement security guards. We sneaked in and found Dad on the floor, unconscious. I rushed to his side and urged Owen to help me carry him out. Mom's home. Help Owen Lee first. When Mrs. Harding saw me helping Dad out, she went berserk. How dare you remove him from the basement? He has work to do. I found him passed out. You're overworking him. If you don't let me take him to hospital, I'm suing you for negligence. Mrs. Harding reluctantly gave in and ordered the guards to take us to the hospital. At the hospital, Mrs. Harding kicked me out of the room and insisted on seeing her private doctor. I couldn't believe my eyes when Kara walked in. When Kara finished, she stepped out and told Mrs. Harding, Mr. Miller is awake. Leave him here and I will care for him alongside the other patient. No, I pay you to focus your care solely on one patient. Miller will be taken elsewhere to rest. So it's Mrs. Harding who hired my sister to care for this mysterious coma patient. I ran to talk to Kara, but Mrs. Harding pulled her away. Fine, I would just have to investigate what she was up to myself. The next day I was by my locker when Owen appeared, so I filled him in on what had happened at the hospital. I took these from the basement. Look, this one has the template for the cheating device Queen and our friends use. So Mrs. Harding hired my dad to make these unethical inventions for illegal profit. I, I just didn't think he'd ever do something like this. The design's just a portable device that could go through metal detectors. Your dad's a righteous scientist. Mrs. Harding must have pressured him into making this. We'll find proof to prove this. That's right. I have to get my dad out of this. Don't worry. I'm always here for you. We're in this together. Oh, I see. So you two are framing my mom? Ariana, you don't know what's going on. Oh, I don't? Then tell me, is this why you approached me? No, no. Let me explain, Ari. And you. You let him use me? (gasps) Am I a joke to you two? Then she stormed off. What I feared the most had come true. Ariana was furious with us both and ignored us since then. Then, a few days later, a huge news report broke. Science no match for monk life? Myla's CEO, Harry Harding, moves into monastery and leaves a million-dollar corporation to his wife, Dazzy Harding. I and Owen were so shocked to hear the news. Just then, Ariana came to tell us Mrs. Harding had been acting odd, so she eavesdropped on her call and heard her mention Mr. Harding, then looked very nervous and shady. Ariana knew something was up, so she paid a private investigator to delve in deeper, and turns out, her dad never went to India. And now that he's back, he refused to see me and was all surrounded by bodyguards. That's it. We gotta get to the bottom of it. So the next day, Ariana went inside her mom's room. Mom, you've been so distant lately. Can we spend some time together? Just you and me? While the coast was clear, I sneaked into her office and rummaged around. Using my lockpick, I opened her drawer. Inside was a treatment plan with Mr. Harding's name on it. I went to the hospital with Owen and spoke to Kara about the treatment plan. There is nothing unusual going on. Ellie, go home. Feeling defeated, we left, but then we bumped into a doctor. What is this regimen? It's designed to make the patient's condition worse. We were shot, but before I could ask him any more about it, I saw Kara get into a luxury car and leave. We jumped into a cab and followed her. The car pulled into this heavily guarded mansion. We knew we couldn't get inside by the front, so we sneaked behind the mansion, climbed over the wall, and shuffled along the side of the building. The door was locked, so Owen kept watch while I used my lockpick to enter. We crept across the kitchen, but I accidentally knocked some pan over and made a thump. Who's that? 
Owen immediately pulled me behind the fridge to hide as the guard shone a flashlight around. Gosh, this tight space made us way too close to each other. I could hear our hearts beating in sync. The guard finally gave up, and we left the room. Suddenly, I spotted Kara turning in the hallway. Follow Kara. I'll stay here and play lookout. As Kara stepped into a room, I saw Mr. Harding lying there. Kara, what's going on? Kara looked surprised seeing me and pulled me to the hall. Ellie, you shouldn't be here. Is that Mr. Harding lying in the room? That's right. Mr. Harding has been in a coma due to an accident during his trip. I was hired by his wife to take care of him. But when he started to recover, Mrs. Harding asked me to put him in a coma for good. I pretended to do as she said, but secretly, I've been helping him. Hmm, then who was the man showing up as Ariana's dad before? What on earth do you think you're doing here? Mansion, go into lockdown! Voice verification, not recognized. Surprised, huh? We've reset the system. Now it only responds to me. Seemed like Mrs. Harding had installed an AI system to control the mansion. Luckily, Owen managed to reset it. <gasps> How could you? Look what else I found in your mansion. You trapped Mr. Miller here and forced him to build a robot to impersonate Ariana's dad without telling him the truth. Dad's also here? And the man showing up as Ariana's dad before was the robot he had created. Restrain them at once. Well, I guess it's time to use my flycatcher. I shot Mrs. Harding and the bodyguards in the eyes. Security, get them! Right then, someone showed up on the yard. I'll distract them with a robot. Those dumb guards mistook the robot for the real Mr. Harding and ran after it. Let's get out of here. Mansion, locked down! The five of us ran out of there, while Mrs. Harding and those guards were immediately locked inside. As everyone was back at the mansion, Ariana insisted on me taking her to see her mom. Why, mom? Why did you do this to dad? I sacrificed everything for your father. My asset and my youth. Myla is what it is today because of me. Yet to him, I was nothing more than a housewife. After his accident, I saw a means to take back what was rightly mine. If only he ever once listened to me. Poor Ariana, she doesn't deserve any of this. Our family was finally reunited, and Ariana let us stay in her home until we found somewhere else to live. As for Mr. Harding, thanks to Kara's efforts, he regained consciousness and is on his way to making a full recovery. Kara's a great doctor, and I think that is a soft spot for her. I'm cool if they, you know, get together. Yeah, I think so too. By the way, I'm sorry about Owen and you. I... Oh, I already forgot about that. You and him are made for each other. I'm out. Oh, there he is. Go get him, girl. Owen showed up with some flowers, looking all dressed up. Hi, Owen. Um, why are you here? You texted me, asking me to pick you up for a date. I didn't. <gasps> Ariana! Well, too bad. I'm here already. So, will you go out with me? Y yes And with that... He pulled me in for the sweetest kiss ever. Ugh, look at them flirting. What an eyesore. But don't get it wrong, trust me. This is no happy family. That woman there isn't my mom. She's Rochelle, our housemaid. I repeat, housemaid. But it looks like she has her sights set on becoming my stepmom. Ugh. We only hired her because after my mom passed away, Dad and I struggled to deal with our grief, and our clumsiness as well, so tidying the house didn't take priority. I suppose Rochelle was an okay maid, can't deny that she's a good cleaner, and her cooking is tasty. However, recently, I've noticed that she always cooks Dad's favorite meals. Also, they laugh and flirt and constantly give each other these gooey-eyed looks. Yuck! Today, she even took out her handkerchief and attentively wiped my dad's sweaty forehead. Who does she think she is? She definitely wanted to hypnotize dad. If she thought she'd have a slot in this house, she was totally wrong. I needed to do something about this. I had to talk to dad right away. Dad, mom didn't pass away that long ago, but it looks like you've already lined up her replacement. Didn't you hurt mom enough by reconnecting with your ex right before she died? What do you mean replacement? Brittany, you're being childish and unreasonable. I don't know, and I don't care. 
but I want Rochelle to get out of our house immediately. She's for sure trying to get something out of you. Okay, fine. If you insist, but make sure you find a new housemaid to replace her. Ugh. So it turns out that finding a new maid who's actually good is nearly impossible. Dozens of people came to try out, but none of them were as considerate as Rochelle. Okay, after all, we still needed a maid. So I reluctantly let Rochelle stay until I found someone new. This didn't mean I was going to let my annoyance for her slide. I decided that while I was stuck in the same house as her, I may as well play some tricks on her to let out my anger. When she decided to cook, again, the divine chicken soup that my dad loved so much, I kindly added a little salt to make it more savory. But somehow, my dad still praised her delicious food. He must just be flattering her, right? So I tried it for myself. What? How could she do that? It tasted amazing. Ugh. Another time, I copied this trick I saw on TikTok by sticking layers of food wrap on Rochelle's door, then acting like there was an emergency. Quick, the oven is making weird noises. I think something's burning. Rochelle quickly ran out of the room and I couldn't help but laugh my head off. Her face was really funny. She then gave me this bewildered look and smiled helplessly. Ugh, why did this woman never get mad? Okay then, let's step it up a notch. I decided to play the ultimate trick. Knowing that Rochelle was scared to death of cockroaches, I cut a cockroach shape out of paper and put it behind the fabric of her nightlight. That night, I was dozing off when I heard a screechy scream coming from Rochelle's room. Aha! Success! But she was so terrified that she fainted. Oops! Do you know what the most annoying thing is? Even after all the trouble I've caused her, Rochelle was still super sweet to me. She was always offering me cookies and asking me about my day and stuff. I felt like she was trying to play the role of a mother, and I didn't like that at all. She couldn't fool me. I knew she only put up with me to please my dad. Thanks to Rochelle, I could never be at ease, even in my own home. But recently, a very special person has come into my life and lit up my mood. It was totally by chance. That day, it had rained like crazy, so there were puddles everywhere. I was on my way home from the grocery store when a car drove whizzing by. I thought I was gonna get a free bath, but then suddenly, an arm pulled me back and shielded me with his body, just like in a romantic movie. Standing there was a boy, soaking wet, asking if I was okay. Aww, he had totally swept me off my feet. We walked together for a while, and he told me his name's Chris, and he lives in the next neighborhood. That's it! I needed to find a way to impress Chris, and also thank him for helping me. So, after some careful thinking, I decided to bake him a cake. I'd seen Rochelle bake before. It looked easy peasy. So I baked one and gave some to my best friend Sue to try. But she spat it out and said, Ew, gross. Hmm. I sadly sat in the kitchen, staring at my pathetic cake and wondered where I'd done wrong. That's when Rochelle stepped into the room. But to my surprise, instead of laughing at me, she patted me on the shoulder. Come here. I'll teach you how to cook. Rochelle was a good cook, so I'd be stupid not to learn from her. This doesn't mean I like her, though. I just want to win my crush's heart. So after that, each day after school, Rochelle gave me a cooking lesson. Okay, so maybe she wasn't as bad as I first thought. We tried out different recipes together and came up with our own perfect formula. And finally, I could bake a lovely heart-shaped chocolate cake by myself to confess my love to Chris. And you know what? He said, yes. I was so deeply in love with Chris that I totally forgot about my conflict with Rochelle. Chris often came over to my place. My dad and Rochelle loved him. So now, besides my dad's favorite food, Rochelle also makes Chris's favorites too. She's incredible. She could remember everything Chris loves and hates, even the trivia, like he's allergic to peanuts. We were just like a family, and I have to admit, it felt kind of good.
And then, out of literally nowhere, the shock of my life happened. My dad passed away from cancer. I didn't even know he was ill. As you might guess, I totally broke down and didn't want to do anything after that. My mom and dad had both left me, just within a single year. But at least I still had Rochelle and Chris beside me. Rochelle took care of me like I was her actual daughter. I was going through such a tough time in life, but having them around made me feel like I wasn't completely alone. The grief had to fade away eventually, and it's gonna be okay from now on, I thought. Until one day, I was baking cupcakes when my dad's lawyer appeared and showed me the will. Turns out, my dad had left the house to me, but only on the condition that I had a guardian. Some woman named Laura. Huh? That's odd. I don't know anyone named Laura. But, wait, I think I've heard this name from someone. Oh, my mom. When she was in her last days, mom once told me that my dad had been talking to his ex again. And her name was Laura. Could it be her? Did he seriously make his ex my guardian? Unbelievable! I had to get to the bottom of this. But how could I find this mystery Laura? I had no family. Well, besides my Uncle Colin, who was living in France. So I contacted him and told him everything. He flew back at once. And although I hadn't seen him in years, I couldn't hold back my emotions. And ended up sobbing on his shoulder. And then... He told me the horrible truth. Laura is none other than the woman who had just walked through the door. It was Rochelle, the woman who had been living in my house. I couldn't believe my ears. What on earth is going on? So Rochelle moving in was no coincidence? My dad sneakily snuck her in as a maid so they could be together? My pain and disappointment were overwhelming but I had to calm down so I could think rationally. I knew I needed to be smart and outplay Rochelle at her own game. Since then, I started watching Rochelle and noticed something strange. Rochelle and Chris were a bit too close and intimate. I often saw them whispering to each other when they thought I wasn't looking. What did this mean? Could it be that Rochelle was trying to coax my boyfriend into one of her dark schemes? Or worse still, was the guy I loved cheating on me with an older woman? My suspicions deepened. When a few days later, Chris told me he was sick, so I had to take the school bus for a couple of days. And Rochelle also asked me for a few days off. Hmm, could it just be coincidence? I didn't think so, so I decided to be a detective for once. Right after Rochelle left, I started following her. And with no surprise... She went to my boyfriend's house. Hi, Mom. Excuse me? Mom? She's his mom? So that means she not only flirted with my father, but also planted her son to distract me to take over my family's property? I trusted them. How could they be so cruel? Suddenly, I remembered a detail that I didn't notice until now. After eating the food she'd cooked, for some reason... My father became weaker and weaker, and eventually passed away. Did she poison him? If that's the case, then she really is a poisonous snake in human disguise. I immediately broke up with Chris, and fired Rochelle, then went home and told Uncle Colin everything. At least I had him on my side. Now what we need to do is refute her custody of the property. I'll take care of everything, and you just have to do what I say. Then, Uncle Colin helped me prepare a lawsuit against Rochelle and her son for fraud. Those two will pay the price for what they did to my father and me. Oh, but the thing is, now Rochelle didn't live here, it felt so empty. <sighs> I was so angry with her, but I also found myself missing her too. I loved and trusted her, and Chris too. And feelings like that don't just vanish overnight, but... When I was still thinking about it, there was the lawyer. Again! And he was accompanied by Uncle Colin. What's happening now? Miss Brittany Jensen hereby transfers the entire estate of 25 Oakwell House to Mr. Colin Jensen, as signed by both parties. Huh? Signed? When did I sign that? 
I snatched the paper and shouted, Scam! I never saw this paper! Uncle, what is this? Please say something! I don't know. Just follow the legal documents. No, 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 no! So Uncle Colin was just pretending to care, when really he just wanted to trick me into signing over my house? Oh God, thinking about it, it must have been that day, the day where he gave me a bunch of papers to sign, claiming that they were about me suing Rochelle and Chris. OMG, the lying con! At the time, I'd been so upset that I only skimmed the first page without looking at the following ones. I was too careless. From tomorrow, Miss Brittany Jensen will have to return all assets to Mr. Colin Jensen. You have 24 hours to prepare. I tried shouting at my uncle, and then I tried reasoning with him, but he didn't care. He just smirked at me and told me that he was just taking what was rightfully his. Ugh, what a vile man. So now, I have nothing left. I was kicked out of my own house and deceived by my own uncle. I don't know why I accidentally passed Chris's house just as he opened the door to take a delivery and our eyes met. I turned and started to run away, but Chris caught up with me and grabbed my hand. Even after the awful way I treated them both, Rochelle and Chris still invited me inside and made me dinner. I ashamedly told them what happened. Then Rochelle told me everything. It turns out that my father found out that he had cancer a while ago, but he didn't tell me because he saw how upset I was after losing mom, and he was afraid I would worry too much. Rochelle saw his health deteriorating and figured out what was wrong, so she volunteered to take care of him because she still cared for him. But as a friend, nothing more. As for the will, my dad understood Uncle Colin all too well and didn't trust him, so he gave custody to Rochelle, but unexpectedly, in the end, I still stupidly fell into his trap. As for Chris, I really didn't know you two knew each other until you brought him home. But at that time, I didn't want to confess I was his mother and affect your relationship. I'm sorry, Brittany. Britt, please stay here with me and Mom. We'll get through this tough time together, okay? That's right, darling. No matter what, we'll never abandon you. I... I... I'm sorry. I misunderstood you both. It's okay. Everything will be fine from now on. You'll never have to do this alone. Yeah. Every dog has its day. This is totally not wrong. My life is nothing like my previous wealthy one, but I have something that my conniving, vulturous uncle doesn't have, and that's people who love and care about me. What my uncle did was wrong, and Rochelle and Chris are helping me to make a legal case against him. As for now, well, I still haven't given up on my passion for cooking and still practice with my master every day. <laughs> and you know what? I just won first prize at the city cooking competition. Right, I better go, as I have a big treat planned for Rochelle and Chris. Emma, your teacher, Mrs. Holm, called again. She said your grades are appalling and you don't pay attention in class. Why can't you be more like your sister? Yawn. Not this speech again. It's been like this ever since I started elementary school. In my mom's eyes, only my sister, Evelyn, inherited our dad's intelligence. While I'm just the senseless member of the family. Ugh, as if. She's only good with useless books. Bet she doesn't know anything practical. Like how dad's ethernet company works and such. But whatever, I don't care. I'm full. I announced as I got up and went to my little headquarters, the garage. I was busy working on my own personal project, so I didn't have time to give a hoot about who my mom's favorite child is. Oh, you must be wondering what I'm working on. Well, this device broadcasts Wi-Fi. Sounds familiar, right? But my device is able to broadcast across the entire city. Not only that, the connection is stronger and much more stable than the Wi-Fi people use at home. And it's more convenient without all the cables and stuff. This is without a doubt my proudest work ever. And what a coincidence that a few days earlier at school, Mrs. Holm announced that for the first time, 
the school was organizing an invention contest. Normally, I give school activities a miss, but this time was different. This contest could be fun, right? There was no time to waste, so I put all my spare time, day and night, into making my invention contest ready. And you won't believe what happened. I won first prize. And that's not all. One of the judges, Mr. Johnson, was so interested in my invention that he offered to invest in it. At first, I was kind of scared and hesitated to agree because, I mean, I was still in high school. But this was an opportunity of a lifetime. So how could I deny it, right? So after that, Mr. Johnson sorted out a manufacturing company and office space for me downtown. This is cool, but I prefer to work in my garage. It's just more convenient that way, with me still being at school and all. I upgraded my device and launched it to the public. And you know what? It was a huge success. Pretty much everybody in the city got rid of their old, laggy Wi-Fi devices and accessed mine. Then one day, I got a call from the local news channel asking to interview me and my family at home. Oh my god, yes! Oh, there's just one snag. I hadn't told my family about it yet because, um, I don't know, maybe I just know there's no way they'd believe me? Like the time I got an A in my physics exam and my mom instantly asked if I cheated. But, well, whatever. This is much bigger than that. So I quickly ran downstairs to the living room and excitedly told my family that the invention benefiting the town was mine. But Mum and Evelyn burst out laughing. So you're telling me that this Wi-Fi, which is broadcasting across the entire city, is your invention? Yeah, Mum, it's mine. Then Mum and Evelyn laughed even louder. Honey, it's bad enough you're failing at school. Please don't start lying. Ugh. Forget about it. Why did I even try? Then, the morning after, when the doorbell rang, my mom opened it and saw a reporter and a cameraman. She couldn't believe her eyes. Mom and Evelyn exchanged panicked looks, then rushed upstairs to prepare. It was so hilarious. <laughs> the hysterics continued as they interviewed my parents. I watched my nervous, sweaty dad stand there like an awkward statue. Well, mom began bragging about me like, as soon as Emma was born, I knew she was a genius like her dad. I always encourage her to pursue her dreams. Jeez, and the Oscar goes too. My mom. I didn't know she could act that well. To be honest, since I could remember, mom never said anything nice about me. Ever. But now that she knew I was the mastermind behind the town's Wi-Fi, she would probably treat me differently. Right? Wrong. Then one night I came downstairs for a glass of milk and overheard mom and dad talking in the living room. Emma is such a selfish child. How badly will this affect your business? The truth is, the company's going through tough times. But don't worry, we're trying everything we can. Huh? Did I do something? And what's wrong with dad's company? I tried to eavesdrop more, but suddenly I heard my dad standing up from the couch so I quickly ran upstairs to my room. The next day, Dad forgot to take his lunch with him to work, so Mom asked me to take it over. But when I got to his company floor, it was deserted. Huh? Where was everybody? Did everybody get a day off or something? But that couldn't be it, right? That evening, over dinner, I asked Dad. I went to your office at midday, but not a single person was there. What's going on? Mom suddenly put her cutlery down and gave Dad a shocked look. Is what Emma just said true? Dad lowered his head and sighed out. Yes, it's true. I temporarily shut the company last week. I didn't want you all to worry, so I didn't tell you. I'm sorry. What? How could you? You said you would fix it! That's when it hit me. But I deeply prayed it wasn't the truth. So I asked him, is it because of my device? Dad didn't answer me. He just glared sadly down at his dinner. But I knew what his silence meant. I was right. Suddenly, Evelyn stood up and screamed in my face. It's all your fault! You invented that stupid device, and now Dad's business is at stake! 
That's so typical of you. You never think before you act. Then she stomped off upstairs. I just sat there speechless. I just wanted my family to be proud of me, but instead, it seemed like they despised me more than ever. Then Dad turned to me and softly said, Emma, this isn't your fault. I was kind of waiting for my mom to say something, anything at all, but she didn't. She just cleaned up the table. I felt really bad about what happened to Dad. But hey, now I had to work even harder so I could provide for my family, right? After that, Mom completely ghosted me. <sighs> As for my sister, whenever our paths crossed, she gave me a dagger look and muttered out mean comments like, Let's see how long it takes for your precious business to fail. I tried to ignore her, but then she took it too far. One Sunday, I was in my garage working away, when suddenly I heard loud noises coming from outside. I opened the garage door to see a crowd of people holding signs saying, We lost our jobs because of you, and no job, no future. My god, they were protesters. I think they were from my dad's office. Wait a minute, I spotted a familiar face. Evelyn? She was holding a big sign saying, my dad lost his job because of you. Eventually, dad came out and dispersed the crowd. Then he called an emergency family meeting. How could you do that to me? The correct question would be how could you do that to dad? Thanks to you, dozens of people have lost their jobs. You're making people's lives miserable. Enough, both of you. Evelyn, what you did was wrong. Families are supposed to support each other. But Dad, she- Didn't you just hear what I said? Evelyn gave me a dirty look, then she ran off to her room. I looked at Mom, who was leaning against the wall with her arms folded. Did she agree with what Evelyn did? Or was she on my side? My God, please say something. But to my surprise, after that, my mother started talking to me again, and she was actually being nice. She even started cleaning my room and workspace. Whoa, this was new? Had she finally accepted me? Then one day, I received tons of emails complaining about my Wi-Fi. It took me all day, but I finally found the cause of the problem. My laptop. Somebody had tampered with it. It didn't take a genius to figure out who it was. Evelyn, duh. But I needed proof so I set up a trap. The next evening, when everybody was having dinner, I ran downstairs, quickly grabbed a piece of bread and said, I need to go run some errands. Oh, and can you please stay out of the garage as I'm uploading some important files? Mom and Dad nodded and smiled at me. Evelyn, on the other hand, just rolled her eyes and continued eating. Well, at least I knew my plan was in motion. I walked outside and hid behind the bushes. So, What's my plan, you ask? Well, I set up my laptop so that when anyone opened it, it would automatically send a notification to my phone and turn on the camera so I could see who it was. I waited for an hour, but still nothing. Then suddenly, my phone beeped. Somebody was opening my laptop. They hadn't switched the light on yet, so it was too dark to see them, but I was 100% sure who it was. Time to expose... What are you doing sneaking out here? Evelyn? What was she doing out here? Wait, if Evelyn was here, then who was it in the garage? Not answering Evelyn's question, I ran like crazy into the garage to capture this intruder. And as soon as I turned on the lights, I couldn't believe who was messing with my laptop. It was... Mom! What on earth was going on? I called a family meeting and told everyone what Mom did. Dad and Evelyn looked shocked and asked Mom why she did it. I just couldn't stand seeing your dad suffer anymore. He put his life into that company, and now he's just a laughing stock. Do you realize our neighbors and relatives have been gossiping about him? They think it's so pitiful that he lost out to his own daughter. So I did what any self-respecting wife would do. Was she serious? Why didn't she just talk to me? All I ever wanted was for her to talk to me. Nothing else. But no, she decided to go behind my back and try to sabotage my business instead. 
After her betrayal, I'd had enough. So I didn't speak to her and avoided her as much as possible. It was one thing for mom to be cold towards me, but I never thought she was capable of doing this. This went on for weeks, and it got kinda tedious. Trust me, it's no fun trying to avoid someone in your own home. But then one day, I arrived back from school and saw dad sitting in a corner in the living room, repairing his PC. Jeez, he looked so miserable. That's when the truth hit me. This was his passion, and I took it away from him. Suddenly, I understood why mom did what she did. She saw how disheartened he was, but knew he'd never say anything to me, because he's always supportive. But how can I fix everything? Should I give everything up so that my dad can reopen his company again? Ugh, why was this so hard to figure out? Wait a minute. I think I have the solution. You must be wondering what my dad was doing here. Well, I came up with the idea that we should work together. My dad's a pro with technology, so it didn't take long to show him how things work around here. Oh, and since my business has grown, we were able to employ some of his former work employees too. With dad around to help, I have time to focus on my studies. Even Evelyn started helping out, and she was so good at it, I made her dad's assistant. Talk about a proper family business, ha! As for mom, we had a really long talk. I finally told her how awful her attitude towards me made me feel, and she apologized for everything she had done. I eventually forgave her. I knew she did that just because she loves dad very much. So, after all that drama, we're now just one big happy family. <laughs> I was tidying up my room when a call came through. Oh, my big sister! She lives with mom, so I've not seen her in a year. Blair! It's been a hot minute! How've you been? Hi, Karenin. Well, not so good. Mom laughed. Oh no! What happened? Then Blair told me it's due to mom's debts. She had run away from the loan sharks and left my sister behind. That's awful! So I told her to come to Portland and live with us. She agreed to come, but then I realized that Blair staying here wasn't really down to me. Oh well, it's not like I could leave her in danger, right? So, later over dinner, I told my family about Blair's current situation. Oh, how terrible! Yes, Blair must come and stay. Yay! Their kindness didn't surprise me as my stepmom and stepsis, Chrissy, have been lovely to me ever since I moved in. You know what's even cooler? Christy is a rising teen pop star, but she's so sweet! We've grown super close, and she even told me all about her secret boyfriend, Damien. They'd been together long before Chrissy became famous, and had since kept their relationship out of the public eye. This is so exciting! I haven't seen Blair since our parents split! This guest bedroom is gonna be hers and we're living under one roof again! Blair's basically my alter ego. She's pretty, outgoing, and popular, while I'm more of a homebody. Come to think of it, I see a lot of Blair and Chrissy. They're both so extroverted and confident. They'll get along just great. But to everyone's surprise, Blair showed up looking completely different. Wow, it seems like living with mom, a party animal, had clearly influenced Blair. Hello, Blair. I'm Stacy, and this is my daughter Chrissy. Welcome to Portland. You must be tired from your trip. Let me take your bag. Sure. Huh? Doesn't it seem like everyone's excited about Blair's arrival, all except for Blair? Maybe she's just tired. I showed Blair her room and helped her unpack. Oh my god, they're unbearable. How can you stand living with them? They think they're so much better than everyone else. What? Blair had only spoken to them for five seconds. Why she disliked them so much already? Give them a chance, they're really lovely. Blair's probably just stressed out from all the mom stuff. Hopefully with time, she'll see how great stepmom and Chrissy are. Only things didn't get any better. After class, both Chrissy and Blair came up to me. Hey, hey wanna, wanna hang, hang out? out? I asked her first. Oh, then we can all go together. Sorry, Chrissy. It's just that we haven't seen each other in ages and there's a lot of catching up to do. Maybe we can go to Sephora tomorrow to check out that new Anastasia palette you like. Sure, have fun. Then Chrissy left. I'm sure she really wants us all to hang out. Oh, please. She thinks just because she's popular, she can always get her own way. She's mid. Okay, maybe it's best not to mention either of my sisters to one another to avoid World War III. Things went on like that for a while. I took turns to hang out with Blair and Chrissy. Once when Blair was chilling in my room, I noticed her smiling at her phone. Seemed like our homegirl had finally found something fun to enjoy around here. I excitedly asked her what she was watching. 
Look, isn't he cute? He goes to our school also. Wait, no, it can't be. That's Damien, Chrissy's secret boyfriend. If Blair learns that the girl she hates is her crush's girlfriend, all hell will break loose. I think I'll ask him out. Really? He's so popular, he must have hundreds of girls wrapped around his finger already. Besides, what if he's not into you? You'll only be rejected and get hurt. What do you mean? Am I not pretty enough? Oh, I see. You think that a popular guy like him is only suitable for your famous, fabulous other sister, Chrissy, don't you? No, no, that's not what I mean. You're gorgeous. In fact, out of his league. You deserve a guy who has time just for you. So why bother competing for attention from someone like him? Okay, thanks. But he's my type. I'll ask for his number Monday morning. Oh no, I just accidentally encouraged Blair to ask out Chrissy's boyfriend. I can't reveal that Chrissy and Damien are secretly together, but I can't let Blair steal someone else's boyfriend either. What a mess. I tossed and turned all night. Then when I woke up, I decided I'd just have to make Blair stop liking Damien. I don't condone catfishing, but right now it's the only way. Hey there, Blair, right? It's Damien here from math class. What you doing? A few seconds later, Blair replied, Oh my god, I was just thinking about getting your number. Looks like the first steps of my plan are working. I texted Blair as Damien regularly. I made sure he was a man of a thousand red flags. But for some puzzling reason, Blair seemed smitten with him. I gave him a seriously challengeable temperament. He could throw a tantrum one moment and become sweet the next. Then I photoshopped Damien's selfie into a photo of a messy bedroom, then sent it to Blair. Surely she couldn't abide by a narcissistic, messy guy like him. I'm so sorry, Damien, but I have to save my family. Huh? What? She sent back a picture of her room being messier than ever. She's always the clean freak around here. I had to see with my own eyes. Hey, may I borrow your hair curler? And what's with your room? So what if it's a bit untidy? Neat people are total psychos. Okay, it's time to get personal. Blair's biggest pet peeve was being commented on her look. So when she sent Damien a selfie, I didn't hold back. Babe, can't you dress more ladylike? And you really should cover up that awful tattoo. Voila, that's how you wake up the beast inside this fierce girl. <laughs> However, the next day, Blair showed up with a completely new look. Worse still, she walked straight over to Damien. I had to fake having an emergency to prevent a disaster from happening. Afterward, I texted Blair. I'm not ready to let everyone know about us yet. Please understand, babe. You know I like you. There, that should stop her from trying to approach him again. Even so, during lunch, Blair wouldn't stop blabbering about Damien and showing me his text. Isn't he quite rude? You don't normally let guys tell you what to do. He's not. He's just opinionated. I'm into that. No, he's horrible. I don't understand why you like him. He's sweet. You just don't know him like I do. Our love is complicated, but that's what makes it special. Seriously, you call that love? What do you know? Okay, little Miss Love Guru. If you're really that experienced, make that guy your boyfriend. Succeed, and I'll give out the love of my life. If not, I'll do as I please. What Blair is daring me to do was impossible. That guy, Adrian, is as popular as Damien. While Damien's the friendly one, Adrian is nicknamed Jack Frost due to his icy cold exterior. Rumor has it, no one has ever seen him crack a smile. Surrender, as expected. Then step aside, sister. Not knowing what else to do, I agreed to the bet. This is for Blair, for Chrissy, for Dad's happiness. Hi, Adrian, right? I, I, I'm... Uh, are you free tonight? Or whenever? He gave me this cold glance, then went back to chatting with Damien. Please, I'm just trying to win a bet with my sister. One smile from you is enough to save the fate of an entire family and stop two girls becoming homeless. Can you just- Adrian gave me this odd look. Then he burst out laughing and took my hand. Sure thing. Can't wait for our date tonight. I left in a haze of confusion. That really just happened? Adrian must be messing around. But nope, he actually showed up at my doorstep that evening. This meant I'd won the bet, right? So I called Blair over to show her, but she just brushed it off. That proves nothing. Talk to me when Ice Boy professes his love for you. Man, I guess this means I'm going on a date. The tension in here was palpable, so I decided to break the awkward silence. Hey, where are we going? I mean, this isn't actually a real date, is it? It's definitely real. You insisted. I must have looked so dazed that he continued. Don't worry, I'm not messing with you. Anyway, I think you'll like where I'm taking you. I used to think he was incapable of smiling, but turns out he looks even cuter when he does. A drive for cinema? Wow! I'd seen these in old movies, but I had no idea it still existed. So, what's the deal with your sister Chrissy? You mentioned the bet? 
you know that Chrissy is my sister? Of course, it's not exactly hidden. Besides, I'm friends with Chrissy's boyfriend. So, you know? Yep, there's no secrets between me and Damien. And don't worry, I have his back. So, can you answer my question now? <laughs> I like this different side to Adrian. So before I could stop myself, I told him how the bet wasn't with Chrissy, but with my other sister, Blair. And I was catfishing Blair as Damien to protect my family, but it's barely working. Whoa, that's intense. Secrets make things complicated. Life sure would be easier if we could just be ourselves. So, why did you decide to go on a date with me? Don't you think it's weird? <laughs> no, not really. Beats how girls normally ask me out. I arrived home feeling on cloud nine, but then I walked past Chrissy's room and saw her upset. I asked her what's going on. It's Damien. He wants us to go public, but I told him I'm not ready yet. I like having this part of me private, and I don't want Damien to be open to backlash and scrutiny. But he didn't understand and thought I was embarrassed of him. Oh, Chrissy, what a pain. Give him time, I'm sure he'll come around. But the school performance is in a few days. How am I supposed to take the stage in this state? I hated seeing Chrissy so downhearted like this. And I thought about Adrian and what he said during our date about honesty. I don't know much about the pressures of fame, but I do know that your feelings for Damien are real. I don't think love is something that you should hide. Honesty is the best policy. It might be hard at first, but you can get through it together. Now, come to my case, I should also follow my own advice and put an end to my catfishing before it gets out of hand. I tried hard to think of the best way to break this to Blair while we were walking to school the next day. After much hesitation, I pulled her aside before entering school for a talk. Only, before I could get to the main part, Damien walked past and oddly, Blair didn't do so much as to blink. Seeing my confusion, she said, Yesterday, he ignored all of my messages. You're right, I deserve someone better. Anyway, what did you want to tell me? Oh, that, um, my date with Adrian was amazing. It all happened because of you, so thanks. And sorry about Damien. It's okay. That's strange. Did my smitten sister really just give up that easily? But anyway, at least it's all over now. <sighs> and I don't even have to come clean anymore. The day of Chrissy's performance arrived. Me, Adrian, and Damien had backstage access. Actually, I'm here for emotional support as Chrissy is about to tell everyone about her relationship with Damien. This is a surprise for Damien too. He just thinks we're here to get a better view of Chrissy. <laughs> she slays the performance and the audience adored her. Thanks everyone, thank you so much. Actually, today is an extra special day because I have something. But suddenly Blair stormed onto the stage and snatched Chrissy's mic. How about making it even more special with this breaking news? Everyone, she's had a secret boyfriend all this time. She made the poor guy hide in the shadow so she can keep her squeaky clean image. She's lied to you all for years. Is someone like that worthy of your support? Blair ran off as soon as she finished. Boos start coming from the crowd. Many people began commenting on the situation in true TMZ fashion. What is this, 2009 VMA? No way, my Chrissy is taken? Meanwhile, Chrissy had a panic attack and froze there on the stage. I didn't know what to do. Neither did Damien. Luckily, Adrian kept calm and grabbed the walkie-talkie, connected to Chrissy's in-ear. Chrissy, listen to me. In times like these, there's only one way out, and that's confronting the truth and taking back the narrative. I looked at Adrian and realized something about my own problem. More on that later. For now, let's see how Chrissy handles this. Well, there goes my big reveal. Yes, I'm in a relationship but I only kept it quiet because I wanted to separate my personal life from my professional one. Being a public figure and a teenager at the same time is not as easy as you might think, so I didn't want to drag my loved one into that life too soon. On reflection, maybe this wasn't the best way to deal with this. I won't hide anything from my fans anymore, and those who truly support me won't judge or speak badly of my decision. Everyone, I want you to meet Damien, my boyfriend. The audience went wild. Aw, this is so cute but I still had one more problem to deal with. Blair! I look everywhere and finally found her hiding under the bleaches. Blair, it's just me. Please come out. I started to talk about what just happened, but Blair didn't want to hear it. I know everything. You tricked me because you think I'm an idiot. La 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 la. I let her finish her outburst and calm down. Then I apologized and told her the truth. I only did it because I didn't want you going after a boy who's already taken. I know I went about it in a completely wrong way but I just wanted to keep our family together. I love you, and I don't want to be in the middle of your jealousy towards Chrissy anymore. If you just gave her a chance, you could have just been honest with me. 
This is all because you prefer Chrissy over me, don't you? No, of course not. I just wanted to protect you and for there to not be any more conflict between you and Chrissy. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Actually, I'm not jealous of Chrissy because she's famous and gorgeous. It's actually because you guys are really close. We used to be that close when our parents divorced and now it's like I've been replaced. Blair's honesty touched me in the feels. I gave her a big hug, but then realized that we weren't alone. Actually, I'm jealous of you, Blair. You're all Kieran and Eva talks about, and I feel that, even though we're close, I can't compete with her real sister. Oh, so the tension between them wasn't just over a boy. It was actually over me. To me, you're both my real sisters, and I love you dearly. Come on, sisterly cuddle. Oh, by the way, how did you know that I was pretending to be Damien? I overheard your conversation with Chrissy. It didn't take much digging around to figure out it was you texting me, not the real Damien. While we're at it, I find it worrying you were still into him after all those red flags. In future, please let me vet your dates first. You're too easily blinded by good looks. Oh dear, that's why us girls have to stick together, especially when it comes to boys. Hey y'all! Your one and only Miley Cyrus is back once again with the Spencer Sisters story. Things were getting more complicated, right? Where were we? Oh, yeah. Scarlett was determined to bring keyboard warriors who cyberbullied her and Naomi to justice. And soon, she accomplished just that. But Scarlett was shocked to her core to see a familiar face among them. That's Naomi? What in the world? Even your girl is shooketh. What's gonna happen next? Let's find out in this episode. From the moment their eyes met, Scarlet was completely dumbfounded. Scarlet, I, I... Why? How could you, Naomi? Naomi said nothing and just kept her head down, but Scarlet could no longer stand on her own feet. I'm okay. Naomi, a word, please. Why do you look like this? And why you did this? You know what? When those constant waves of comments tormented me, do you know how I kept my head above water? I told myself, I don't really know them. Their words can never hurt me. But I can't wrap my head around the fact that the one hurting me is my own sister. As soon as Athena got news from Scarlet, she dashed to the police station and then arrived in the middle of the sister's argument. Scarlet. Before you call me the worst names in existence, I want you to trust me and know that it's simply how I handle stress. Seriously? Hear me out. I was so happy for you in the beginning, but eventually jealousy just started creeping in. I felt small and insignificant living under the same roof as a head-turning popular big sister. It got worse when people on the internet started comparing me to you, and I felt like I was nothing but a piece of trash. Gradually, I found myself coming to your haters forum, and that's a slippery slope. Being among them made me feel like I mattered, like those people actually listened to what I had to say. It's like I was finally someone, and I didn't want it to end. Before Scarlet could react, Athena couldn't stop herself from sobbing out loud, and the girls saw her. Mom? Mom? To their surprise, Athena suddenly slumped down. It's all my fault. I led you two down this path. Never have Scarlet seen Athena like this, and neither did Naomi. Where had the icy, tyrant woman gone? Naomi, you have to stop before it's too late. It will eat you up and swallow you whole. Sorry, Mom, but if you're really my mother, you shouldn't have stopped me when you refused to help me. You could have just let me do whatever I wanted, and I could have figured it out the hard way myself. And from now on, I want to be free from you. I want people to know me as me, Naomi, not your sister. We belong in different worlds. N Naomi, I can't even recognize you anymore. Naomi didn't say a thing and was going to leave, but police officers immediately seized her. Just let it go. Then Scarlet and Athena returned to the suspect's lineup and saw that Finn was still there with an anxious look on his face. Scarlet, where have you been? You okay? Scarlet couldn't hold her anger any longer and screamed at the lineup. See how you've ruined our lives? Happy now? You carelessly threw around that bone-crushing, hateful language just for fun and never paid those on the other end any mind. Now you'll face my wrath. You're Athena Kingsley of Elite Talent Management, aren't you? Why you... Oh, yeah. I am... Um... My mother! Come again? Yeah, she's my mother. Don't act so surprised. Mom, this is Finn, my agency's creative director. I'll go with her. Get home safe, okay? Wait here. I'll get the car. While waiting for Scarlet, Athena and Finn had a little chat. It's a pleasure to meet the famous Ms. Kingsley. I've heard great things about you. Oh, you've made quite a name for yourself as well, Mr. Finn Simpson. Well, that would be exaggerating. Him. 
I see the way you look at Scarlet. I can tell there's something bubbling under it. She might look like a tough cookie, but she's my sweet, sensitive girl. Treat her well, or I'll crush you into a fine powder and scatter it on Mount Oblivion. You hear me? <laughs> yes, loud and clear. <laughs> and Naomi, that girl's quite a handful, isn't she? Since she's under your management as well, keep an eye on her for me, would you? Yes, ma'am. Can't forget that. Right then, Scarlet halted the car in front of them. Mom, let's go. Finn, you're still here? Well, I'll see you again soon. Bye. Scarlet and her mom didn't say a word the whole way. Perhaps they were both exhausted from today's crazy mess. If it were me, I would just lie down and sleep it off like a log till morning. Unexpectedly, Athena blurted out, Scarlet, could you take me to your dad now? Why so sudden? Because I was still mad and didn't want to see his face. No, the truth is, I'm a coward who wouldn't dare face him. Until today do I have the guts. They drove to her father's hospital room to find him sleeping peacefully. Let me wake him up. It's all right. Let him sleep. Then Scarlet went out to give them some privacy. Remember me? It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? How come we only met again when you can't hear a word I say? Let alone answer. I know you're still mad at me. And I was mad at you, too. But I've learned to live with it. And seeing how well you raised our babies made me feel much more at ease. I've done nothing to help them all these years. Yet they turned on each other all because of me. I promise I'll make things right. Trust me. And please, forgive me. Then Athena left right away. But little did she know, her voice did reach him. If anything happens, call me right this instant, okay? Right after their goodbye, Scarlet received a text message from Finn. Wanna go for a walk? This is the first time I've been to the beach at night. I love how serene it is. How did you find such a cool place? There's so much you don't know about me. <laughs> then they sat down for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. The gentle breeze and the sound of waves soothed their jaded souls. Um, things do be crazy, right? Kind of, but you've been so strong. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, and thank you for staying by my side. <sighs> it's been a while since I felt this calm. And so long since I saw your carefree smile. By the way, I just saw the news about an influencer contest, which sounds interesting. Isn't it American Influencer? Yeah, I was about to tell you too. Want to sign up? Do you think I can win? Of course I do. You're good at everything you do, especially messing with me. I mean, my thoughts. <laughs> Okay, then where shall I begin? My looks, retake a soft skill course, and, and... Enough about work, okay? Scarlet was taken aback, then went with the flow. They gave each other the sweetest kiss ever. The golden moonlight shining on the shimmering sea made the night even more romantic. Okay, guys, you've seen enough movies to know what's happening. Shall we talk about Naomi a bit? After the incident at the police station, she had a mental breakdown for a week straight and isolated herself from the rest. She lived like a zombie in her own apocalypse till one day. I've dwelled in misery long enough. This calls for a rebirth. Let the best version of me be born. And so she entered her transformation era, invigorated and ready. She even chopped off her long hair and went through minor plastic surgery to add some highlights to her face. I got the sort of perfect looks down. Nothing will stand in my way of success. Wow, gotta admit, she's kinda rocking this cool new look. Reminds me of my wrecking ball era. During this time, Naomi still replied to her mom in Scarlet's messages, but meeting up was still a no-no. The only one she saw regularly was her dad, to whom she could pour out all her thoughts. I'm much better now. You don't have to come so often anymore. This much back and forth is gonna wear you out. It's what I want to do. Anyway, I'll be a bit busy this time around, so I actually can't see you as much. Please rest up so you can come home and celebrate my accomplishments. All right, you betcha. Better get going then. Don't make them wait. As soon as Naomi left, Mr. Spencer's smile disappeared. His expression was of pure agony. Maybe he's not doing as well as we thought. Hi, Finn. Long time no see. Naomi, you look different, but in a good way. Listen, I thought it through. I want to go professional. Help me, will you? Yeah, sure. I want to join. No, I'll win this competition. As if on cue, Scarlet appeared. Naomi? Oh, Scarlet, perfect timing. Naomi, featuring her brand new appearance, is back. Do you know how worried I am? Come on, she must have her own reason. Truce? By the way, Scarlet, have you decided on the influencer contest? Naomi is in it too. The stage is all yours, ladies. She's joining too? No, two sisters competing against each other in the same competition at this time is like kicking off the Third World War. No thanks, I'm not interested anymore. Losing interest all of a sudden? I want to compete fair and square with you, so put away that patronizing attitude. I don't need it. No, I don't. I just... Fine, watch me. 
Come on, relax, relax, relax. You both win, okay? Scarlet and Naomi exchanged sulky looks, but can't hold it for long before bursting out laughing for no reason. Come to think of it, Naomi is very much like your mom, full of determination and ambition. Yeah, I took after dad and got the easy going, Jean. I guess that happens to every sibling duo. True to her words, Scarlet followed a laid-back lifestyle, which drew lots of fans to her. Now, this is not just a job, but also a passion of hers, sharing good tips and spreading positive energy to everyone. Meanwhile, Naomi was hard at work to be ready for the competition. She tried, tried, and tried to grow in every aspect, and pushed herself hard in the gym. She also read tons of books, enjoyed courses to enhance every skill she thought might be necessary. 24 hours a day didn't seem enough. There were days when she worked her butt off till bedtime, and she simply let her body crawl into deep sleep without changing into her PJs or doing her nighttime skincare routine. Still, Athena and Scarlett always kept a worried eye on Naomi. Naomi, Naomi, we we can can help. help! I'm sorry, but I need to focus. I'm so sorry. I want to make you proud, and I can't afford any distraction. When Scarlett told Finn, he said he'd handle this. Since then, Finn spent more time with Naomi and her advisor, and they became close. Scarlett saw how Naomi brightened up, but couldn't help but feel uneasy. Of course she'd feel that way, Finn spending less time with her. Scarlett, wake up! Now is not the time for this nonsense! Eh... I feel you, girl. There's something I hadn't told you. After that night's big kiss, Finn professed his love, and they became an item. Yay! The competition finally commenced. Scarlett, Athena, and Finn were in the audience awaiting Naomi's performance. Out of the blue, Scarlett got a call from her dad's personal nurse. Scarlett, your dad's condition is getting real bad. You'd better get here now. Should we tell Naomi about this? Of course we should. Yes, you'll regret not telling her. Right then, the host announced it's Naomi's turn. Scarlett immediately ran up and dragged Naomi backstage. Naomi, we have to go! It's Dad! He's getting worse, I'm afraid! Wh- what D- Dad? I just saw him a few days ago and he was fine. Why now? I don't know. Scarlett, I'm sorry, but this is my last chance. Please take care of him for me. I have to go. Then Scarlett, Athena, and Finn immediately left. But they were only a few steps away when they saw Naomi black out on stage. At the same time, Mr. Spencer was also fighting his own battle. His prognosis was bad. We're sorry. We've tried our best. No! 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 Dad! 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 Please don't go. Dad! You're awake. Calm down. What were you dreaming about to be sweating like this? Dad, where's Dad? Then there was a familiar voice from the bed next to hers. I'm right here. It's truly a blessing that Mr. Spencer's no longer in critical condition. And you, you fainted on stage and were taken to the ER. Some time had passed when their dad and Naomi became stable. I couldn't remember the last time we went here together. I still remember how much I hated this place, but now I think it's grown on me. I can kind of appreciate it now. Why did you suddenly want to go home and leave everything behind? I've always wanted to make something of myself, so I chased after something I didn't really understand like crazy. The moment I saw Dad left us for heaven, I felt dead on the inside. Even though it was just a dream, I can now look back and safely say I was wrong all this time. You know, to me, being in show business means creating values for your audience. Fame is sort of a byproduct, not the end result. Being famous feels almost unreal, like a fever dream. Those who flatter us today might turn their back on us the next day. Only familiar love will remain till the end unconditionally. Mr. Spencer returned to his beloved diner, and today's special since these four were giving him a hand. Sit down. I got this. Hey, my help expires today, old man. Enjoy it when you can. I ain't here tomorrow. Oh, hey, I saw your dot on TV yesterday. She really is going places. She's a whole package. A beautiful face and a heart of gold. I saw her on a charity program, too. Scarlet was still shining bright in her own way. You're actually looking at the receiver of the Influencer of the Year Award. But now, she's got another loyal fan for herself. All right, that's about it, folks. Poof, just telling you guys this story gave me a spinning headache. Luckily, everyone has their own happy ending. Scarlet and Finn are getting engaged next month. Oops, that's not in the script. Shh, I didn't tell you nothing. Being famous seems great and all. But remember, don't let it control you. Comment below if you want to see me in another episode. Mwahs! Hi, I'm Donna, an influencer extraordinaire and soon-to-be supermodel. My family are my biggest supporters. Look, there's my sister Charlotte. 
Even though my parents are busy running the family corporation, they buy me whatever I want. This includes this spectacular dress for the upcoming Elite Model Look Contest. Girls, get ready! We're eating out tonight! Yay! Charlotte just helped Dad secure another business contract, so it's time to celebrate! At the restaurant, Mom, Dad, and Charlotte walked ahead while I showed my 329,587 followers around. My fans even commented that I should compete for Miss USA. Suddenly, someone bumped into me, causing me to drop my phone. Oh no! My live stream's ended, and it's all his fault! Idiot! You ruined my live stream. Now my fans will think I'm rude and unfollow me. Are you walking with your eyes closed? Sorry, I didn't mean to. Let me make it up for you. Donna the Fabulous? Okay, you've just got one more follower. What a jinx. He better stay out of my sight. But as soon as I reached our table, I saw his face again. Why is he here? Donna, this is Matthew, our new finance director. Oh, how important. But not as much as live streaming, right? Who does he think he is? Charlotte even laughed at his stupid joke. Speaking of which, Donna, you're going to study business from now on. Time to stop those modeling, live streaming things. What? But why? You've always supported my dreams before. But Dad just ignored me and chatted with Matthew. Dad was being so unreasonable. Everything was fine until that Matthew guy showed up. Charlotte comforted me and suggested we attend business classes for me while I prepared for the modeling contest. What a brilliant idea! Oh, I love my amazing quick-witted sister! I then put all of my focus into practicing for the contest. But Matthew kept on disturbing me with his nonsense. He even sent me a picture of wedding rings saying, Are these okay? Think they'll match us? I frantically called him to ask him what all the gibberish was about. Hasn't your dad told you yet? We're getting engaged and taking charge of the company together. What on earth is this guy saying? Since when was I expected to marry some guy I barely knew and take over a business I had no interest in? Dad should have some explanation for this. Upon arriving home, I confronted Dad, but he just sighed and said he was planning on telling me himself. But you can't just dictate my career and who I marry. Donna, I only want the best for you. But Dad, Donna didn't even attend her business classes and is still indulging in her nonsense fashion club. How can you expect her to handle the company? Oh no, why is she telling him that? Was she trying to help me? She's right, Dad. I have no interest in business at all. I can't. If that's the case, then you can start as vice president and get some hands-on experience. And you, Charlotte, you'll be Donna's personal assistant and support her. No! This is not how you want it to turn out. Dad used to love us both, but now he didn't even listen. Ugh, yes, Charlotte, my savior. She would surely know what to do. I can't believe it. I've tried so hard to prove myself, only to have everything given to a simple-minded fool like you. S simple minded That's what you really think of me? Well, I guess I just gotta take my new position to show her how simple-minded I am then. So the next morning, I dolled up and strut to the company lobby under a different name, Miss Vice President. Huh, look at those gawking eyes wishing they could escape from the boring suits. Matthew was there too, and... was he... Laughing? Suddenly, my heel got tangled up in my dress and I tripped over. What a disaster. Matthew offered me his hand and asked if I was okay. Who needs his help? And all the silly chatters? Just wait and see. And by that, I mean now. Matthew introduced me to the company's core members and announced some new strategic goals for the company. ROI, margin, accounts. Jeez, what kind of language is he speaking? After what seemed like an eternity, he asked if anyone wanted to add anything. Aha! I, of course, couldn't miss a chance to show my leadership. This office is seriously lacking some colors. Violet blinds would be a good start, and some motivational pictures really help boost productivity. Oh, you mean putting up motivational quotes? Oh, please, no. Motivation comes from the all-time fashion greats. You know, Bella Hadid, Tyra Banks, Kendall Jenner... Everyone gawped at me while Charlotte furiously signaled me to stop. Everyone here is so boring! Ugh, alright, I'll stop then. My first day was then followed by tedious meetings and schedules. Everyone was talking gibberish and making me sign a bunch of papers. But every cloud has a silver lining, and for a foodie like me, that's dinner meetings. These people really know how to enjoy life, don't they? But before I could even have my first bite, they all started asking me about proposal this and project that. 
Unfortunately, Matthew was there to save the day. Honestly, he seems pretty good at his job. And he's quite attractive when focused. Oh yeah, work. I gotta contribute my own talents at work too. So, the next day, I put the sign on my door, then sat back and watched my favorite fashion show. Ooh, look at those dazzling dresses. One day, I'd be walking the runway in a gown like that, not sitting here surrounded by confusing numbers and papers. Later, when I opened the door, an endless line of people was already waiting for me. Jeez, can't this company with all these brilliant brains function without me? Right then, Charlotte came dragging me away. What happened? Oh gosh, I didn't know that my computer was connected to the meeting room's projector, so everyone had been watching Project Runaway with me. Matthew was in the conference room too. Why didn't he fix it? Okay, everyone. We should thank our cute boss for giving us a lot of ideas for our problems. He finished the meeting and let them out, but Charlotte was still standing there fuming at me. Cute? There is nothing cute about it. Don't get any wrong ideas that he likes you. Wait for me, Maddie. What is with that attitude? Oh, right. I've seen the gooey-eyed look she gives Matthew. Does she have feelings for him? Before I could pry further, I was sent to Millen for another stupid meeting. Feeling bored, I watched a fashion show to kill time when someone startled me from my side. I personally think this collection is overrated. Oh, sorry if I scared you. I'm Brian. He then gave me his business card and, wow, he's the CEO of a modeling firm in France. Are you coming to the fashion week too? I wish. I actually came for work. <sighs> oh, what a pity. There's a modeling contest this week. I can tell a true beauty like you is destined for the crown. I missed so many chances to be on the runway. If I make it this time, maybe mom and dad will see how serious I am about modeling. This is too amazing of an offer to refuse. Brian, I'm coming with you. At the show, I made sure my phone was off so I could truly immerse myself in all the glamour of the newest fall collection. Brian then kept his word and took me to the audition. I was super nervous at first, but unexpectedly... Everyone else looked so amateur. Meanwhile, I strutted like a pro, confident that this time I would get an offer. But for now, reality was calling. <sighs> as soon as I turned on my phone, a zillion missed calls from Dad and Matthew popped up. This screamed trouble, so I quickly got Brian's contacts and returned home. There, Charlotte went all banshee shrieking mode on me, accusing me of being irresponsible and selfish for skipping the important meeting. Dad, if you don't do something about this, Donna will destroy the company you've worked so hard to build. That's right. But instead of yelling at her, you should have been there to help out. I'm so disappointed in you, Charlotte. Oh God, Charlotte's face turned pale immediately. Dad should be scolding me, not her. Feeling a little bad for Charlotte, the next day I went to talk to her, but it sounded like she was arguing with someone inside. I walked in to see Matthew sitting there with loads of pictures of Brian and me. We're still, in Charlotte's words, it looked like we were dating. A few photos can't change the fact that we're getting engaged. He then grabbed my hand and pulled me outside, leaving a stunned Charlotte behind. How are you so sure that I'm not seeing someone else? It's just a feeling. Or maybe it's just my hope, because I... What did he mean by hope? And holy shrimp, why is my heart beating so crazy? What a day. I thought it was finally over when Dad slammed the pictures of me and Brian down in front of me. He was so mad at me, he decided our engagement would be tomorrow instead of a month, as planned. But I haven't mentally prepared for this. So here I am, at my engagement ceremony, waiting for my fiancé to arrive. <laughs> just kidding. Actually, Brian called me last minute to tell me the best news ever. A fashion brand had chosen me as their ambassador. I needed to fly over for some paperwork. Thanks to him, I successfully escaped the engagement and flew to Milan to meet up with him. Finally, I got to pursue my long-repressed dream in my favorite city and not pay heed to my dad's ridiculous orders. Yay! As I woke up the next morning, I eagerly reached for my phone to call Brian, but... Huh? Where was it? I looked at the nightstand, but my passport, my wallet, and all of my stuff had disappeared. I dashed to the reception asking for Brian's room, but they all shook their heads saying there was no one by that name staying there. Frantic, I used their computer and checked the website for his phone number, but it kept saying error. Then I look up any information about the contest, but found Zilch. How could he do this to me? I trusted him. Now I'm in a foreign country, all alone, and with no money. What am I going to do? I can't just call Dad to come get me, and neither can I call Charlotte. There's only one person I could contact right now. So I called Matthew, and he flew over immediately. We were walking along the Navili Canal to get some dinner before heading back. 
I thought he would be furious right now because I ran away from our engagement, but he was just quiet the whole time. So, is it okay for you to suddenly come here? I mean, work and stuff, you know? It's alright. You come first. Everything else comes after. That's sweet of him, but I needed to make sure he didn't get the wrong message. I called for your help, but that doesn't mean I want to get engaged. I'm... I'm not ready to come in. At first, I wanted this marriage to happen, but now I'm not so sure anymore. Oh my. Did me running away from the engagement upset him that much? As we stepped through the door, I saw Mom, Dad, and Charlotte waiting for us. Charlotte instantly bombarded me with her dolphin frequency yelling. Seeing how much they worried about me, how irresponsible and terrible I was. You should have won an Oscar for your acting, Charlotte. Unfortunately, your partner played you this time. Acting? And what partner? Turns out Charlotte was the one behind all of this. She hired Brian from the beginning to make me look bad in my parents' eyes. She also made sure my engagement with Matthew didn't go as planned. Everything played out just as she'd wanted, but she didn't think Brian's greed would get the best of him. He called Matthew, saying he was holding me for ransom. And during the call, the idiot fraud accidentally brought up Charlotte. We were all too shook to even speak, when Charlotte burst out crying. You're right! It was me all along! She's never done anything useful, yet got everything meant for me! Mom! Dad! If you needed someone to take care of the company and marry Maddie, why her? Why not me? You haven't told them anything this whole time? I was still processing everything when my dad sighed and said, I was going to tell you both when the time felt right, but seeing you pitting against each other like this hurts me so much. Actually, Donna, we're not your biological parents. Turns out, Dad was my parents' private lawyer and the company belonged to my real parents, not to Dad. But then, my parents got into a terrible accident, and during their last minutes, they gave the company, and me, over to him. They asked Dad to raise me properly and arrange for me to marry Matthew as a part of their deal with Matthew's parents. Growing up and seeing me so passionate about modeling, Dad was going to let Charlotte run the company and let me live my life how I wanted to. But then Matthew and his family showed up and insisted we get engaged according to the deal. Dad had no choice but to respect them and carry out my parents' will. So, my current beloved mom and dad are not my actual family? Worse still, my biological parents had both passed away. Donna, we hope you understand. Though we're not related, we have always loved you as our daughter. This is very hard for us, too. I looked at mom and dad, the ones who had always loved and cared for me. Mom, dad, just like you two. I'm sure my parents would want me to do what makes me happy. Though, I am the lawful heiress of the company. I can only do harm to it. So, I hope you understand, and let Charlotte take over it. She's a better suit than me. That's right. You cannot force someone into doing something they don't like. Neither can you force someone into love. Woohoo! No more boring office job. Instead, I've put all my energy into elite model look. And here I am today. You've got this, Donna. I confidently strutted down the runway with Mom, Dad, and Charlotte cheering from the audience. And when I finished my part, I joined my family and nervously waited for the MC to announce the chosen ones. Samantha Friske, Amelia Davis, and Donna Rossi! Yes! I've made it! I've been waiting for this day for so long! Suddenly, I spotted Matthew coming towards us. Congratulations, Donna. I knew you'd get it. Thank you for coming. I know love cannot be forced, nor should I rush it, but... Whenever you're ready. Donna, will you go out with me? How about... now?